All right, hello, welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging. Uh, we are back and we are playing um, Eternal Lies tonight. We're continuing our Call of Cthulhu campaign uh, that we just started up last week. If you're familiar with Eternal Lies, you know that Eternal Lies is actually a, uh, a Trail of Cthulhu campaign, but we are going to be running it uh, within, uh, within Call of Cthulhu because I am running out of brain capacity, despite the fact that my head is so big I can't fit into the fedora that I bought uh, for, for <laughs> So that's that. Uh, Long, you want a fedora? Uh, I could try it, but my head's pretty big too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I was going to give it to Melissa, but it literally swallows up Melissa's, uh, Melissa's head like completely. So Melissa's yeah. got a great hat. <laughs> That's true. We just got a lot of big heads around here. I had to buy the largest fedora I could find on eBay. Okay. So hot. It's so ridiculously hot. I was like cold this morning and now I'm just ridiculously hot. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, Jacket okay. and vest. So, uh, so yeah, we're going to continue out the second session. Uh, we had a really fun time uh, sort of introducing characters, kind of getting the, the hook of the, the hook of the campaign, getting it off the ground. Uh, and now we're going to reach our first destination and actually do some proper investigation uh, so we're going to dive right in today. So I just want to hop right into the summary and then I just want to get going. Uh, so October, 1936, uh, you all, uh, were summoned or recruited by a wealthy heiress and widow by the name of Janet Winston Rogers. She recruited all five of you, uh, because she needed help unraveling a family mystery. So jazz singer Marie Sissy Mae Wynn, uh, she was known to Winston Rogers as a woman who could keep a secret. Uh, she was brought on during a uh, a recent birthday party for uh, for Janet Winston Rogers, who just recently turned forty. Uh, Pastor Zephaniah Wood, did I get that right? Zephaniah. Zephaniah Wood, a former Texas Ranger turned even uh, evangelist. He came next. Then we met Patrick Price, who seemed to have a fairly complicated history, both with Janet and her late father, uh, Walter Winston. And then finally, we saw Professor of Anthropology Beverly Key and her student researcher, uh, oh my gosh, Shima Oberon. Did I do that right? It, okay. All right. Uh, both of you were recruited uh, basically with the promise of funding for the department. Uh, all of you met in an airplane hangar south of Arkham because that's where we basically started. Uh, both Beverly and Shima are both from uh, Miskatonic University. Uh, and so we we all met uh, in a in a airplane hangar south of Arkham, private. Uh, where Janet Winston Rogers and uh, her pilot, soon to be, what was it, a, like fun uncle energy, Frank Kearns. Frank Kearns, cool uncle energy. Cool <laughs> uncle energy. <laughs> basically fills you in on the job. So Janet believes that something uh, happened to her late father back in 1924. Uh, he had been for much of her life a fairly ideal father and husband uh, who kind of built himself up through the pharmaceutical and medical industries and was a good a good dad and a good and a good husband but for a while there in the early 20s and so things kind of changed he started to to become a bit obsessed with what she called the occult she started he, he started holding secret meetings kind of traveling all over uh and becoming more and more distant from his family and after 1924 is where like everything sort of changed everything went really bad uh and this time for the worse uh, so there's no more secret meetings, no more traveling. And he became what she described as basically a hollow shell of the man that he once was and even told his impressionable young daughter that nothing mattered. Uh, when his wife turned to alcoholism and later died, seemed to have no emotional effect on him whatsoever. And after Walter's death earlier this year, 1936, Janet discovered a cache of letters from a man named Douglas Henslow. Uh, and it seemed to be begging Walter to respond, to confirm that Henslow had the experiences that he had, to prove to Henslow's doctors that it all kind of really did happen, something along those lines. The letters also seemed to imply that several people died and that Walter was the leader of this group uh, and uh, Henslow was a member. Now, Walter, as far as Janet could ever just deduce, never responded, uh, but she does want to know what dark secret her father was hiding uh, or harboring. And... Uh, all she really has to go on in these letters, which were postmarked from two separate addresses in Savannah, Georgia, including just recently earlier this year. So courtesy of Frank Kearns, you all pop, hopped onto her plane and you flew south to Savannah. Last thing we saw was you all listening to Marie uh, serenade you all with a little song 
as you flew through the night. And we'll we'll start up. Um, we'll start up as the plane lands. Uh, decent landing, especially since all of you can walk away from it. It's definitely morning. You can tell uh, probably mid-morning, we'll call it, uh, by the time you actually do land. Uh, Frank describes it as Hunter Field, which is a bit outside of town, a couple miles. Uh, and um, as the plane kind of gets taxied off and uh, off of the main runway and the chute, we start seeing you all one by one uh, start getting off. Uh, we can see Frank helps you kind of unload the bags. And then he kind of turns to all of you. And I was like, well, uh, you all uh, you all have a good time. Uh, good luck with it. I'll, go ahead. Don't, I'll take care of the, the plane. Don't worry. And, uh, you know, uh, if you if you want to rent a car, yeah, you just head over there. And he kind of points over to this terminal. Uh, there's some boys over there you can, t- you can talk to. If you just want to hire a driver, that works too as well. Uh, and you're kind of on, uh, kind of, kind of on your own at this point. Uh, if you need anything, don't don't hesitate to reach out. I'll be around here somewhere. I gotta talk to these boys, make sure we can find a place to park this thing. Uh, any questions for me before I uh, let you all out? Uh, Frank, I I I I meant to ask you earlier uh, if you if you fly be- between you know kind of the north and Savannah. I, I was I was lucky enough to be here in Savannah when the the Los Angeles flew over the war the Navy warship. Did you get to see that? Just lover of of aircraft like you are. I just thought you might have, you might have caught that too. It was delightful. Well, and I have no idea what you're talking about, but it sounds delightful and I will want to hear all about it. Uh, but I got to pluck this baby. You got a, a job to start and you know, uh, we'll meet up later or so. If you want to get a drink or so, I'll be more than happy to hear about this fun little story of yours. All right. It, it, it was great. Thank you for the, thank you for the flight down. It was, it was. Wonderful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being such wonderful customers, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's your bags. Toodaloo. Uh, and you can see he hops back into the plane, kind of starts sort of like taxing it away a little bit. I don't know how it works, but anyway, he's getting the hell out of your face. Uh, so first time that we have kind of arrived at a location, uh, there's a few things I think I just want us to get into like a, a a process for this. Uh, so you are in Savannah, you are near the terminal. So a couple choices that you have, you're a couple miles away from Savannah itself. So things like, how are you all going to get around? Uh, are we looking at like a rental car? Are we looking at like uh, hiring a driver? Uh, where are you looking to stay? I don't care about specific like hotels. It's more just along the lines of like, are we looking at like a very nice hotel? Are we looking at city center? Are we looking at like the edge of town, CD motel, something anonymous? These are sort of the types of questions uh, that I'm curious about. And also, um, how do you dress? Uh, it's October. It's Savannah. Uh, I would say it's uh, it's still pretty warm. Uh, you're looking at probably like 80s during the day. At night, it'll probably dip down into the 60s. Uh, and how and how 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 do you all dress? So I'll turn it over to you as you all carrying your bags, heading into the terminal, figuring out the process and what you're going to be doing now uh, as we move on. We're we're gonna run it. Uh, we're gonna get a driver, right? I mean, you you can't go somewhere and not have a local driver that can give you tips about things, right? Well, of course, I'm not really a driver myself. Well, no, and we can throw some, throw some nickels together, and uh, I I can't afford too much. Uh, oh no! I pick oh, up no, my don't. milk crate and the tarp <laughs> belongings. <laughs> I uh, no I yes I I Am get, I the only covered. one with anything in driving? Not only that, probably? but you're probably the only one with a halfway decent credit rating too. I would <laughs> I would think. Knowing what they all do for a uh, living. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In the yeah. Even in life. 30. <laughs> what's, <laughs> what's y'all's credit rating? 30. Uh, I'm at 40. Uh, well, it's quite I'm personal moderate. Moderate. Where is my 40. third rating? 40. <laughs> I, I, it's not very high. Yeah. He's not a anyway. poor thing. He can live comfortably. <laughs> by Anna, a nice rock from, I don't know. Uh, damn it. I forgot jewelry store names. Anyhow. <laughs> so we'll find Marie has local. a 30 in credit rating and she's the one saying we should rent a car and hire mm-hmm. a driver. I'm looking directly at Beverly as she says so. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, when you guys do get inside the terminal, it is, uh, it's not an extraordinarily busy place. It is not, you know, it's not like air travel has become, uh, as ubiquitous as it is today. Uh, so you definitely see that it is, uh, sparsely populated. There do, do seem to be, uh, some kind of private or, uh, funded, uh, flights that are, are kind of getting ready 
And you can see everyone's dressed very nicely. This was back in an age in which people dressed very nicely to get on the plane. Uh, and so you can see people are, are, are kind of looking up at you and no one's really giving you much um, much notice. They just kind of see you wander in uh, through the doors themselves, uh, kind of carpeted all over the place. You can hear uh, the sounds of people selling newspapers, magazines, uh, various uh, accoutrements and stuff like that for the uh, for the plane. Uh, Kips would be proud of me for that. Uh, and all those types of things. <laughs> uh, and there are a few places where you can look around and especially as you if you if you look out maybe the front entrances into the terminal where like there's the the curb of the street where people are being let off or or, or, or getting uh, or getting cabs, there are a handful of folks that are kind of calling out like, oh, yeah, you need, you need a ride. Uh, I can drive you around, show you around town. No problem, no problem. And that's not what they sound like because we're in Savannah now. So it's like, so it's more Southern. Uh, but that's <laughs> that's basically what you have here. So what are y'all thinking? Um, I would say we start with a taxi likely for now uh, to, uh, I would suggest a hotel in the center of the city until we get our bearings and we can always move after that. As for what yeah. Pastor Wood is dressed like, he he's probably dressed pretty much the same as he was before he's a southern boy already uh so he'd be prepared for this type of weather it might be a bit more humid than he's used to but he'd just be wearing a you know dress uh shirt uh slacks he does have his slacks tucked into his cowboy boots and of course he's wearing his fedora and he's got his tie on but he he wears it loose and he kind of tucks it into his buttoned shirt just so it doesn't fly around everywhere beautiful beautiful um Okay, well, if that's the case, Pastor Wood, you can uh, you can flag down a cab. That's not a problem. Uh, there's probably an attendant uh, that's uh, near the near the entrance to the airport that can lend a hand. Uh, they'll make sure they get something with a with ample uh, ample room to fit all five of you and your various luggage. Even though some of you have less than others, and we'll say you all can kind of hop in the cab. Give them just have a brief little conversation, get a recommendation for a hotel, center of the city, etc. And we'll say you all start driving. Um, now, uh, I think Marie has said she's been in Savannah. Is anybody else been in Savannah? We think, okay. Um, I, I probably would have, uh, been nearby whether I actually spent much time in the city. It, it probably would have been more like suburbs for me. Okay. Uh, you're not that far away from town, uh, just maybe two miles away or so, uh, from what you can tell, like you are, you're on the water. It's a kind of a shipping, uh, area and, and as you're sort of driving, through maybe some of you know windows down and such getting this uh this crisp air hitting you a little bit of humidity you're feeling the heat already especially packed into the car together and some of your get-ups uh you can already feel that uh that, that's sort of happening uh, you can tell that the roads are not in the greatest of shape uh as you as you depart the the air airport as you go through some of these surface streets and get over to the city there's you know asphalt that's kind of eroding away here and there you can kind of see in some places once you start reaching into the city proper, some of the asphalt is worn away and you can actually see the underside of it underneath it. There's these cobblestones uh, that are almost visible as if they just asphalted over top of it at some point in the past. You see weeds uh, kind of coming up through the cracks here and there. Um, and you're, you're kind of getting this sense that it's not um, it's a sort of a city in a kind of a weird state uh, as you pass by what look like. Definitely Victorian buildings that have this old, uh, this old sort of antebellum feel to it and everything. But at the same time, peering closely at it, many of you with, with, who are particularly perceptive, you can you can notice that many of them just seem basically dormant. You're not seeing any activity coming and going. Uh, the city itself is kind of broke up into these different squares with these uh, these large uh, these kind of almost uh, park like uh, sections here and there that are kind of connected through these old fashioned roads. Uh, but eventually you find yourselves uh, let out at a hotel, as you asked, in the in the center of the city. Uh, not a bad looking hotel, uh, but also not something as grandiose as you might find in Arkham uh, or uh, or maybe Chicago or, or anything like that. But it's certainly got a charm to it. Uh, we'll say you check in. We don't have to go through the rigmarole. I am curious, though, uh, how did the are we talking like five separate rooms? Are we splitting off? Like, is there some particular way that this happens? I think Shima Beverly is, uh, would share sorry. a room with Shima. Oh, okay. awesome. Because yeah. Shima is very <laughs> uncomfortably going to be like, come up to you and be like, oh, yeah. You I don't even have, have to money. ask. <laughs> Beverly's like, nope, I'm 
responsible for you. We will split a room. Fantastic. Uh, So Shama starts to ask and then is gratefully willing to be cut off by Dr. Key (laughs) so that she doesn't have to say the words. Um, and then yeah. after Which that happens, how she's dressed. She's very middle class. Like it's very, it's it, she's got a white shirt and a belt and a longer skirt. Uh, mom, mom's a seamstress and so sort of me. Like she doesn't look messy or dirty or anything, but like she, like her clothes have the care of like someone who has like three nice things and like takes <laughs> care of them. They're like, well that's loved. that's her vibe. Fair enough. Uh, okay, uh, Marie, what are you gonna say? Uh, yeah. So after um, sort of Shima and Beverly have their conversation, then you see that Marie just sort of kind of pops up behind them and is like, "Oh, so uh, gals, I we we could. Uh, I I don't mind if there's a, a a couch or something in the room. We could certainly. Uh, you you want to stay uh, with us? I, you know, I, I I do think we we might have to uh, have some extra expenses while we're here, and and perhaps this might be a an easy way to just pinch some pennies. Tommy looks at Doctor Kins. Yes, yeah, and, and may she win stay in the same room as me, please. <laughs> oh hush, now we're all we're all just just people here. We're all just uh, here here to do a job. But, but thank you, thank you, Ken. Beverly is very bemused as she just kind of like nods like of course and then she turns and she deals with the clerk to see if we can get either like an extra cot brought in or have like a queen and a double or however this works. I'll ask uh, for the couch. Uh, the couch is probably nicer than most beds I've slept in. I would imagine a cot is possible if you if you request it. Like they could probably drag mm-hmm. something in. Uh, I I don't think that's too difficult, especially considering your credit rating, Beverly. Uh, I think if you're the one doing the requesting, it's probably no issues. Um, Fantastic. What about the gentlemen? Are you all bunking up, or are all you taking separate rooms? Well, Mister Price, I've been told that I'm tighter than the bark on a tree. If you care to split a room, I wouldn't mind. I'm not so. Sure you're talking about but it means i prefer to save money (laughs) all right (laughs) i can tell none of you from the south the expressions Uh, that you have are just delightful i'm a man of lavish myself so i prefer a separate group okay Uh, suit yourself so we get I'll three to, rooms, basically. As a cleric, I'm gonna try to persuade my way into a lower price room at a high, like a nice room at a lower rate. Okay. So All I'm, right. I'd be like, I'm new to the city. Can I get a nice first impression of Georgia? Uh, and like, well, I am been, I am very pleased to make your acquaintance and to have you in our fine city and fine state. Uh, I, I've been more than happy, uh, to, uh, to assess accommodations for you now. However, I must say that you, uh, I don't want to be, uh, untoward and rude here, but there is a, a price, of course. Uh, and so they, they kind of go through the different options you have. Uh, basically, like, you can get, like, a low-level, like, small room, but there are some nicer rooms on, like, a second or a third floor that maybe have a balcony. Maybe that's something that Beverly was able to, to get for the three, uh, the three women in the, in the party. So if you want to try to like uh, give us a little uh, give us a little persuasion, so so how, so you said persuades per, persuades usually like argument logic. So so what are you saying, Patrick? How are you how are you, how are you doing this? Uh, I go into if it's a nice day, I get a nice first impression. I would tell all my friends up in New York, not New York, the North about it. Maybe they come down here, come visit this establishment. Okay. Probably mentioned Arca. I'm like, oh, Arkham, you are from a, a decent far northeasterner. I, I thought I, 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 I heard a small little hint of an accent. Uh, very, you hide it very well, sir. You hide it very well. Um, you have the look of a working man, and he's kind of looking as you're like exchanging cash, kind of looking at and like coins stuff like that. Your hands, you are a working man. Uh, so go ahead and go ahead and rip a pers- persuade roll. Give it a go. Yeah. First roll of the game is a fail. 83 is, over 30. You can spend 53 points of luck if you would like to get a, <laughs> a, a balcony hey, room. That, 
That's not bad, actually. I'm going to spend all 53. You might as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, normally. Hell, yes. This is the opposite of one ring. Yeah. Hell, Ooh, right? yes. Oh, my God, right? That long never <laughs> spends. 53 so. to succeed, but it's only 68 to get an extra success. <laughs> oh, I don't have enough work for that. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> he leans forward. He leans forward. And he's like, well, as luck it would have it. We did just have cancellation. Um, and you do have to look. Are you? You wouldn't happen to be a, yeah, you have that, that scent, that cologne on you. You have the look of a man who knows a thing or two about um, dressing fine. Uh, and we do have a few folks around here who, well, they could use with a, a spruce up. Well, I just saw not too long ago uh, a man, Southerner, so I feel quite terrible making such an insult, but he was one round, shirt slightly untucked in the back, and he had on a pair of cowboy boots. So having a man such as your stature, I think that would do us well. Uh, and so I'll say with your with your luck, that happens to be a cancellation. You get a nice fancy room uh, right on the same floor as the as the as the women. And it's very big. It's all by yourself. And Pastor, you're in so you're, you're next. Pastor Woods is in line right after Patrick, and he's got like uh, stitches in his shirt and his pants mm-hmm. from where it's been mended. You know, he looks Are much, <laughs> much lower class. And <laughs> he just says, uh, could I take a cot in the boiler room? Uh, yes. Yes, you may, sir. Yes, you may. And he kind of looks over towards Patrick at this point and makes a motion in the direction of Pastor Wood. Uh, yeah, uh, that I think that sounds agreeable. Uh, and the two of you take care of your rooms, all five of you. Take care of your rooms. Pastor Wood's getting the, the sort of a stink eye. Patrick, uh, you you have a fancy room. And we'll say you guys take a decent part of the morning to freshen up. Uh, it's been a long plane ride. Uh, you might be a little bit tired too. It could even be like a quick nap, something like that. And we'll say sometime around midday, lunchtime-ish, you will maybe reconvene at a certain point. Uh, so um, we'll say for sake of ease, this hotel has a has a lounge. Uh, and maybe all of you meet down there and get a nice little uh, afternoon cocktail or some small little bite to eat, whatever it might be. And you have you have an investigation. So your leads are, just to review what Janet gave you, uh, you have a name, Douglas Henslow. You have two addresses, uh, both of which were postmarked from Savannah. Uh, one of them was 513 West Henry Street. And the other is 23 Old Hope Road. Those are basically what you have to go on. So with that in mind, with you all sitting around here in the in this lounge, freshly uh, freshly spruced up and ready, what what does this look like? How do we? How does the ball get rolling? I think before meeting everybody in the lounge, Bev would have gone to like the front desk to inquire about uh, getting a map of the local area and inquiring about hot spots. Uh, and then even asking about like these particular addresses and how to get there. Uh, this man looks quizzically. I'm hot spots. I'm sorry, ma'am. What exactly do you refer to? It is uh, roughly the same temperature pretty much all around oh. Savannah. Obviously, going out into the swamps is going to be a bit more humid, uh, and that might I cause guess your sightseeing. I it should have been the proper term. Sightseeing. Um, Kind of looks a little confused and references maybe a few squares in the town, maybe a restaurant or two. Uh, so I would say that that Savannah, uh, as you guys might know it today, uh, is mm-hmm. something of, of a tourist town. It is not so in the 1930s. It's at a weird crossroads uh, where for a very long time Savannah was, um, you know, there, there were certain industries that were, that were prevalent, cotton, uh, timber, etc. A lot of that has been moving away, uh, but the, the tourist the tourist feel of Savannah hasn't quite come in yet either. So it is kind of this, and you got, and you got that feel as you were coming through it. It actually looked Mm -hmm. like a town that was, had the history to it, but at the same time seemed to be dilapidated and, and kind of fighting back with ruin here and there. Maybe she would have actually asked for like the best, like historical locations just because of her anthropology background. Oh, and he will point out uh, all manner of things. Uh, He will, he'll, he'll sort of, I, I, I'll say yeah, we'll say they have a map. Sure, map of map of the city of Savannah, and he'll mm-hmm. kind of point out here, give you various addresses, intersections, places to see, 
uh, places to eat and drink, wonderful things, and, and the nightlife. Oh, well, there's some wonderful music here. I'm kind of pointing out, making little, pulls out like maybe a pen, starts marking places on this uh, on this map for you, doing whatever he can, certainly. Excellent. Okay. And then is he able to give us directions to these addresses? Uh, you can make a roll for that. Um, okay. Um, yeah, go ahead and give us, let's say, hmm. Um, if you're just sort of, it's more of like, um, he is himself not a library. And unless these addresses are specifically like these hot spots that you're kind of referring to, it's unlikely he's just going to know what that address is off the top of his head. Uh, Got it. But he might point you maybe down the street to the, like a library okay. or, or down the street to like a civic building or something like that where you, oh, I'm sure he can go ahead and just kind of look that up right there. I know that mm, well, Henry Street. Well, that sounds, mm, well, that sounds certain. I definitely know that's in the city. And he kind of point, okay. he sort of marks out generally on the map where like uh, where Henry Street might appear. Oh, bro. Oh, oh, well, that sounds like something out. Well, that sounds like outside city city proper. So uh, I, I, mm, I can't say I particularly know um, Old Hope Road. Old Hope Road. That I imagine that's out by Moss Island Peninsula. I would imagine that could. Okay. I not think about it. That hmm. I wonder. There's all sorts of different uh, collection of farms, plantations out that way. Uh, they call it Peninsula, but sometimes during the during the seasons, the rainfall is significant enough, and I might actually be an island and such. I would imagine it's probably out there from very, some very old homes out that way. Uh, old, old money, old, pro, old proper savannas. Excellent. Thank you so much for your help. No, oh, uh, you're more than welcome, man. Okay. Um, anybody else taking a tactic that they wanted to do? Is there anything else they might have done? Not with him, but with the group, I believe, as we were in the lounge uh, discussing our current plans uh going through these letters i i see 23 old hope road that's the one he said was a old farmhouse most likely or an old home uh there's one line that stuck out to me that said i've made a book of everything i remember and hidden it away here so perhaps this would be a good place to start we could go look for that book see who owns this home if we could poke around a little bit we might be able to find a good bit of evidence at least a first person uh, accounting of what was going on. Well, and, and I, I, I do believe that uh, a, a stop by City Hall is going to be uh, essential for us. I, I think we should probably just get some information about just this this family. We've got this uh, Henslow family, and just see kind of who they were and and who 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 all is here and who all we can speak to and just kind of think definitely the getting to know who this person was and 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 their 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 place here I think that that would probably be very important okay so if anybody would want to try like we said civic building or library or whatever it might be that's totally fine you can give me just a library use role we'll say that during this this sort of lunch hour where you're kind of getting your bearings and things if you're trying to look into it some more and go right ahead uh and if and if and library use would be the sort of the ideal uh i would say uh and this could be anything from you just looking at maybe a newspaper stand or you going actually down to a public library or you actually going to a city building all of which are probably within uh reasonable walking distance of the hotel you as you said you wanted it something relatively centralized uh and so uh, if anybody is doing that, anyone can do it. Doesn't have to be one singular person. If there's more than one that wants to give that, um, give that I, a roll. I uh, roll library use and got a two under forty four. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. We uh, clearly Janet clearly recruited the best people as Beverly also rolled an extreme success. As Hell that is, yes. <laughs> both of our Miskatonic University representatives are doing their college proud. So like maybe we went person. separate ways. Like one of us went to like City Hall and one of us went to the library or something. That sounds wonderful. Uh, okay. Well, I'll start Can with I go the, to the library because uh Darky is a much more impressive woman, and okay. we'll get further at City Hall. 
Uh, so Shyam, we'll say that if you're if you're going to library, you start digging into we'll say 23 Old Hope Road. We'll say maybe that's the the address that you start tracking down, learning about. Uh, and the uh, the little hint that your hotel clerk had already given Beverly is it tends to be pretty accurate. It's about somewhere between about 12 and 15 miles kind of southeast of the city out in the swamp uh tough tough driving territory depending on the on the on sort of on the rain uh it's kind of like a it would probably be a day trip to kind of head out there and come back or it's the type of thing where if you went out there you might be you know it's a couple it's probably a couple of hours in terms of there back and whatever it is you might be doing um and then when sort of Beverly gives over this idea of Moss Island Peninsula that would probably also uh, helps push it uh, a little bit more uh, towards something that catches your attention, that there is apparently an estate there uh, within this Moss Island Peninsula that is uh, owned and has been owned by a family known as the Henslows since 1801. Uh, and it is a stretch of ground that, like the clerk said, ordinarily a peninsula, but sometimes an island. And apparently it is still home uh, and still in the Henslow name, and specifically, it's it's uh, known to be associated with a woman by the name of Miss Virginia Henslow, a uh, an eighty nine year old delightful uh, gentlewoman. Uh, so that's I would say what Shima sort of picks up. Uh, Beverly will say that you go asking around, you kind of go down the street, talk to some of these uh, various uh, civic representatives and such, and you learn. Uh, that again, your clerk has, has kind of pointed you in the direct, right direction. There is a East Henry and a West Henry Street. So the Henry Street just kind of runs this long kind of relatively straight path and sort of dependent upon where the cutoff point is, where it becomes West or, or East. Uh, but you learn specifically that, that address is the home of a place by the name of Joy Grove. Now, Joy Grove, well, it's a sanitarium and uh, it's been there for about... 40 years. Uh, it was built sometime late 19th century, or excuse me, late, uh, I can do math, late 19th century, like 1897 or so. So it's almost 40 years old. And uh, because you got an extreme success, I, I would say you get uh, a fairly uh, a fairly chatty person who just has, who happens to, uh, as you're speaking with a clerk, who just happens to, oh yeah, I have, you know, I had an aunt uh, who was there, uh, my aunt Nancy. She is a uh, a delightful woman. Uh, however, she has flights of fancy every so often here or there. She has this tendency to just sort of uh, presume that she is not herself. We're not sure if it stems from some sort of desire to not be who she is or, well, or if it's something, maybe something hereditary. At least that's uh, a theory. Some of the some of the doctors are at work there. But uh, but I do know it's a, it's a wonderful place that, that she, she works under uh, her, her doctor's one man by the name of Dr. Jonathan Keaton, uh, the delightful man. Um, no, you know, he has a, a certain, um, a certain air about him, uh, that just kind of exudes a, a sense of confidence. I know he is a, a, a man in waiting, uh, waiting for, uh, to take over the very, uh, the very uh, sanitarium itself. And I am certain after seeing how he has helped, uh, well, dear old, dear, dear aunt Nancy in such a, in such a, such a kind way, I, I look forward to the time when she's able to sort of extend his reach and influence over the entire institution. Uh, so, uh, I, wonderful. Why, why are you asking was, about? Uh, uh, I just, I'm, I'm looking for uh, an old friend of a family, fr a friend of a friend, uh, uh, just to pass a note around. Do you know a Douglas Henslow? Um, no, I'm, can't say I particularly do. Um, one, one moment. And then he starts kind of flipping through, kind of going through some like, well, there is yeah, Henslow Estate out on Moss Island Peninsula here. Uh, well, it's listed to a Virginia Henslow. Um, David Henslow, husband deceased, seems. Uh, oh, well, here we go right here. Douglas Henslow, uh, their son. Their, uh, their, 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 yeah, yeah, there you go, right there. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Oh, you are more than welcome, man. More than welcome. Um, who uh, would you say is currently running um, the Joy Grove? Well, I can't say that I know much about it, but I have seen that um, there has been some news and some recent articles, etc. That Doctor uh, Dr. Lawrence Teak, who is, 
uh, well, he's been with the hospital since his very, uh, its very inception. Uh, I do believe he is on the verge of retirement. And uh, Mr. You know, doctor, I beg your pardon, uh, John the Keaton, I believe, is next in line to take over. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much for your assistance today. I really appreciate it. You are more, more than welcome. Now, where is it you are about from? I'm trying to just isolate that accent of yours, and you just, it sounds so, well, so delightful. It doesn't sound like anyone around here, I'll tell you that. I'm from Arkham. Oh, you are a long way away from home. I see, I see. Well, welcome to the fine city of Savannah and beautiful state of Georgia. You have a peach of a day. Thank you. It's lovely here. Okay. So we'll say these scenes fade out. Um, I'll turn over to if, if Pastor Wood or Marie or Patrick, if there's anything that you all were doing while while your researchers were out uh, kind of getting the lay of the land. Is there anything that you will, you three would have been doing? I don't think so. I think I'm good. Okay. Right. I mean, we could even say that you accompanied one of them and just and just weren't doing the talking. That's all. It's perfectly fine. Marie? Yeah. Marie's just sort of been kind of bragging a little bit on like the different times that she was there and all the things that she's seen. And, you know, so she's just consummate storyteller. She's going to pass the time while the kind okay. of like other folks are off kind of yeah. doing the work. And she's bending Pastor just, Wood's ear, just telling him over for, and over. For sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Waiting out on the sidewalk here and there while the two of them are inside doing some research. Okay. <laughs> uh, Patrick, was there anything in particular that you were looking to do? More like just observing the, the scenery, the city, the people. Yeah. I mean, looking around, uh, it is a uh, kind of like I said before, there is there's certainly an elegance to it, uh, but it is definitely an ele elegance that the more you look, the more you start to see some cracks. Uh, you can kind of see that some of the buildings themselves, despite their kind of Victorian underpinnings, this sort of uh, uh, sort of beautiful history and architecture shaped. And you can tell that not all of these buildings are being upkept. Uh, in terms of the people itself, um, I mean, you can see there are there's a decent contrast of folk. You definitely see that light colored suits are a, uh, a very high fashion when it comes to men. Uh, kind of contrasts a little bit with your time in the Northeast. Um, you can see that more than one man has kind of his jacket taken off, slung over his shoulder. He's got his, uh, he's got his like, uh, what was it called? Sleeves uh, kind of rolled up, and you can see them dapping away as the the humidity is quite uh, is quite thick. And you can also notice that there are women that sort of span the gamut from fairly respectable dress, like kind of almost old fashioned in some, in some regards, like it's very tasteful, long skirts to women of sort of more like Marie in the sense, like tailored jackets, like jaunty hats and stuff. Like you can tell that it's a, it's a city that's kind of trying to figure itself out. You're seeing a lot of this sort of duality uh, as you're looking around town. And so what we'll say is after maybe about an hour or so of just kind of walking around, getting a lay of the land, um, getting some lunch, uh, we'll say early afternoon, you all reconvene uh, wherever it might be by the hotel or so, or maybe in one of these beautiful parks, uh, and uh, you're able to share your information. And now it's about, well, what would you like to do next? Well, ladies, what what did, what did you discover? Where, sh where should we go first? Is there somewhere in walking distance, perhaps? Uh, I I do think if we go to 23 Old Hope Road, uh, the lady of the house there, Miss Virginia Henslow, is a woman of taste and uh, like legacy. Like she's not quite sure <laughs> what word to use. <laughs> old money and like how what's the 1930s word for old money? But but either way, the point is that she's like, maybe we should go straight to Miss Virginia Henslow and perhaps she will be willing to speak with a pastor and a celebrity and a professor and Patrick, perhaps you and I can hang back <laughs> these three to the dog to this well-heeled older lady. Well, you never know. She might need a haircut. Or is it like a table moved. I'm really good at moving tables. Well, I, I, 
I, I th- and, and we solved one of the mysteries. We already know that one of the addresses is uh, his home. And the other is a sanitarium. Which is oh. something I presumed. Um, but uh... So it looks like he spent some time in the sanitarium and then went back home for a bit of time and then went back to the sanitarium again. Correct. Which there's a, still a good chance he may still be there. Um... Yeah, actually, sorry, uh, Jeff, do we know if Hansel is still alive or dead or do we have clarity on that? Uh, you're talking about Douglas Henslow? So yeah. you know um, that the... Oh, I forgot to update that little thing right there. There should be... So I'll go ahead and share what you all learned from last time around as you went through the collection of letters uh, that you all received uh, from Janet. You know that there... Are, this is where you kind of got your... Uh, you got your very... Um, information from in terms of like these addresses that there were two. And so the letters, the excerpts began back in 1925. Uh, and those began at 513 West Henry street, which you would know at this point is the sanitarium. And you can see that up until around 1933, that's where they came from. So for a good eight years, all of the letters came from the sanitarium address. And then for about a year, Give or take, um, there were a handful of letters that came from 23 Old Hope Road, which is the Henslow Estate, and then beginning again around 1934 and continuing until earlier this year, uh, just uh, just around the time that Walter died, uh, they all came from, once again, West Henry Street, the uh, address of the sanitarium. Um, the conclusion, obviously, being that, like, like, like Marie was saying, maybe spent time back and forth, but the most recent letters, the most recent information you have is that at the the very least at the beginning of the year, he was alive and it seemed that he was at the very least postmarking his letters, uh, Mm -hmm. from, from the sanitarium address. Yeah. Going, going back and, uh, there's, there's no super clarity on whether he's alive or dead, but going back to the letters now, it, the, since I'm getting now, like, and, and this is something Sharma would share as well, is that, like, the letters from the sanitarium all have this slightly manic, frantic kind of sense to them. And the letters from his home almost seem peaceful in comparison. And then they are back to being kind of frantic at the sanitarium. I, I I would agree with that. I, I I hadn't noticed that change in tone before, but I do believe you're absolutely right. I only notice it now that we know what those addresses are. Well, I I I know that you you all were kind of out and about. Are you ready to get back out there again? I know we were quite quite refreshed enjoying our uh, lunch here. Shall we go yes. pay Miss Virginia a visit? I suppose we will have to rent a car then if we're going that far out of town. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it is going to be like it is going to be a drive out there, uh, and then obviously drive back. So it would it would require it. I would say you're probably yeah. You could probably walk to the other one. It's a lengthier walk because it's kind of on the outskirts of the city, but it's at least in the city. But yeah, you would definitely need a uh, a car, not just a cab. A cab can probably take you to the the other one easily enough. Uh, but it's your call. Marie will go back up to the desk and. Uh request a, a cab okay um like uh very good ma'am absolutely more than happy to and so uh so yeah the your clerk will kind of arrange for a vehicle for you and shortly thereafter one will arrive uh and again decent size so that you all can squish in it is not comfortable travel as there's three people squished in the front and three people squished <laughs> in the back and uh, as you do is have a cab driver uh, and, uh, like, uh, where, where, where is trying to take station? up a, like, less room, but it's <laughs> really not going very well. <laughs> I'm comfortable. No, seriously. Uh, and he will just turn to you all and like, uh, destination, please. Uh, yeah, people yes. heading this afternoon. Uh, yes, we are actually, uh, headed out to the peninsula, uh, Moss Island, I believe. Oh. Uh, I can absolutely do that. Yes, ma'am. I'm more than happy to do that. That is going to, uh, 
just to be upfront about it, be gentlemen of me, make sure I understand this. Uh, you're essentially going to enlist my services for the entire time. Am I to presume you're going to want um, a return, or is this just a one-way trip out to the... Oh, the oh no, we, we have our accommodations here, so we, we will definitely be returning. Absolutely. Well, if that's the case, and I would be more than happy to take you, I would be more than happy to return with you. Uh, there is daily fee, of course, as long as that is... You all look like a very respectable folk who I'm sure would have no trouble. Oh, it's just rude of me. We to all even... look at Beverly. <laughs> He's a... Oh, I see. And so is he. <laughs> so is he. So just in general, yeah. Beverly looks like the rich person. Okay. Uh, and so if that's the case, you guys hop in the car and you begin your, your sort of drive out. Now, um, when you when you leave, you know, travel in the city for a little bit until you kind of start reaching these country roads. And again, you, you pass by, you see plenty of folks milling about. It's a decent day. It's a little overcast. Uh, rain is not hitting just yet, but you can tell that there's a, a threat for it here or there. Um, but driving out in the country, it takes a little, takes some time. It really, really does. As you can see that um, there, there is a certain point where you start seeing all of the sort of Victorian buildings. You can see some factories in the distance and stuff on the horizon and such. Uh, but then as you start traveling further and further Southeast away from the city, uh, it becomes, well, it becomes a, a much greener, uh, array, uh, as you're seeing all sorts of the roads are getting kind of bumpier, a little bit winding. Uh, you can see branches are starting to reach out from the side, almost look like they're kind of hanging over like these gnarled little hands are dripping with Spanish moss. They're uh, kind of grasping and fighting over what little sunlight they can possibly get from what, as you start to travel further and further out, has become an increasingly overcast sky. Lots of arches of trees and such as well. Uh, I'm sure the windows are open as it's so, it's so warm uh, and I would imagine Pastor was probably not the only person uh, dabbing away some sweat here and there. Uh, and you can see that everything, or you can smell like this, everything just sort of smells wet. Uh, like every now and then you come to these sort of different crossroads and these different stops here and there. Sometimes you can tell that they are signaled. Sometimes you can see there's just a group of people kind of milling about, moving out of the way here and there. But everything smells just wet, just wet, wet, wet. It's like the trees are kind of sweated and dripping. Uh, eventually the road, which at one point was, was a sort of asphalt, it turns into this sort of red dirt road that's continuing to meander here and there between like the sagging moss. Um, you see that up ahead, there is like a, almost like a, a tunnel through the swamp that you're starting to see rise up further and further. You're seeing less, uh, less greener and more like this dark, uh, just dark kind of boggy water over, uh, overcut with like some kudzu and stuff here and there these dabbled patches of light uh, more than once some insects some gnats kind of get into the car itself and you find yourself just kind of snap slapping away here and there your driver's just like oh yeah don't y'all y'all not familiar you don't get the you don't get these kind of insects these swamp insects up where you're from i can tell y'all northeasterners kind of got that kind of got that look about you you know very uncomfortable the sound of your voice you know kind of all don't quite speak the english quite quite exact but that's fine all that's all fine and good you kind of just look well, i'm just kind of talk. I am so offended. thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> ahead, no i'm not with them so uh there's definitely on like on like all of that there's also this like smell of like clay and mud eventually you come to this covered bridge which um it's almost like this just tunnel of wood that's just spanning over this stretch of like green water with these occasional little uh, islets of like the black uh, water itself kind of peeking out or these brown reeds, logs kind of floating by, a few gators here and there that you also see. Uh, and you can kind of see them just slowly meandering without a care about time underneath, uh, underneath the bridge itself. Uh, and eventually like... You can see your driver's like kind of stopping at this fork and he's just like, and that, see, that way is south, that way is east. One, one moment, please. And he kind of gets on out and stands in the middle of a fork and kind of looks like, okay, that way pavement. And then we got some pack clay. Okay, oh, oh, I got it. No worries. No, no worries. Uh, and as you kind of pass by, there's like this, this rusted street sign. You can see this brown dog lying on the side of the road here and there, just like man, just in heat. Uh, just kind of watching you all as you just slowly drive past as he's like now second guessing. Did he take the right fork? 
He kind of looks back. I, I, I beg your pardon. I'm so very sorry. I'm, I, I'm so very. We don't often come out this way. It's not, not a common destination. You know, I just let, take people around the, around the city sometimes out to the airport. So I, I apologize. So I, I'm so very, so, so, so very sorry. So very sorry. But eventually it does seem like he kind of gets himself settled. Yeah. And this, uh, this, this drive is a lengthy drive and it's uncomfortable and you're very hot. And eventually you do find yourselves coming up this, um, this sort of wet road. Uh, you can see that the gnats have now been replaced by these giant palmetto bugs that are just like flickering against uh, the windshield itself. Some of them are getting inside. Uh, inside the car too, kind of flittering, getting caught in your hair. Anyone who's who's now uh, who's now like sweating, you can kind of feel them almost sticking to you here and there. Like there's this stickiness just to the uh, as your shirts just adhere to the seats themselves. Um, and as you start driving up this sort of winding path, you see more. You see trees kind of flanking either side. The Spanish moss kind of sort of dangling here and there. You see leaves and seeds kind of blowing in this wind. Everything smells now, turns to like a bit of rot. Kind of look out into the, 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 the marsh itself. It doesn't have that kind of vibrant green in some ways. There's a, a bit of a bit of brown to it here and there. Flanking the, the sort of path moving up, there's like this thick, dark mud. And you can see there's more than one or two animals that just kind of seem to be stuck in it here and there before pulling themselves free. There's like a kind of weaving up there's this sort of general kind of unwelcoming feel up ahead you can see that there appear to be finally the first time in a while the signs of of of, of a home of grounds you can see there's about a, a big old wall like about a six foot high stone wall that's capped with these wrought iron spikes you see that the path you're on leads to like this driveway that is covered by this wrought iron gate and beyond it in the distance, you can see a slightly up a, a kind of a, a slight incline. There's this plantation style house, crisp, shining and white. I, I, I think this is it right here. And he's kind of looking around. Oh, there we go. And he kind of hops out of the car again, goes up to this little sign. And he, he just kind of cleans off this, this mud and grime. And you can definitely see there's a little sign that says, Old Hope Road this way. And he pulls you up right to the gate. You can see that there is a little bell. You can see kind of through the gate, there's one other building kind of off to the side by one of the walls, but otherwise it's like definitely looking at this plantation house. Uh, I would say the drive probably took maybe an hour uh, and all of you are probably soaking wet and you look it uh, as you step out of the car. <laughs> so what do you do? As, so as we've been kind of driving, um, Marie, I sat sort of in the middle front seat. Um, and so she is attempting to sort of bend his ear to see if like there's any sort of rumors around town around this family. Like if there's anything that they've heard, if like, you know, Miss Virginia seems to have had a kind of a long life. Is, is there anything that, you know, she's, she's known for or the family's known for or just try, trying to see if there's any sort sure. of gossip about them. Uh, what would you like to roll for this? Is this like a, are you just trying to charm? Is that what this sounds like to me? Uh, that is what Marie does. <laughs> Absolutely. Go ahead. Uh, okay. So um, it's 70, 35 under 70. Okay. Uh, 35 under 70. Okay. That's a hard success. Like, oh, well, I can tell you that she lives alone as far as I know. Uh, I, again, I don't come out here very often. I'm more of a city man myself. Not that I have anything against these places, uh, but, you know, I'm still driving around town. My, uh, my brother, he works over at one of the factories, and you know, we don't really kind of come out this way very often. Um, I definitely know that they are not really producing much anymore. It's kind of old money. Uh, there used to be oh, all sorts of plantations and farms and such here and there that are all kind of operated under the Henslow name. I don't think that's quite the same anymore. Uh, she's, um, from what I understand, she's a bit of shut-in. Doesn't really come out very often ever since well, her husband died. And, and as far as I know, I think she has... Uh, the, 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 her son oh I can't remember his name anyhow I, I don't really like to gossip too much but I heard that he had some um, some trouble um, I remember oh that was just a few years back there was a oh, maybe 33 32 somewhere around there uh, some kind of violent altercation or such and got himself in a lot of trouble got himself locked up I believe 
Uh, but, oh, no. Again, I don't mean to... I don't mean to speak ill. Not, not in, in prison or such. He's a... Well, he's in... Something wrong with his head. You know? You understand what I'm saying? He was, he was in, in the war, right? In, in the war? No. I, I beg your pardon. War? No. I, no, right. I don't... Don't know anything about the war, ma'am. Uh, no. Sorry. Maybe. Um, I'm trying to think... Was he of age to fight? He might have been of age to fight, but I, I, I like I said, he. Is, this is just all rumor and you're mending gossip, and I, as you know, I am not one to gossip. Oh, uh, uh, just court, but of course, you know, but but any things you've happened to have heard about could be useful. Well, I, well as far as I understand it, the, 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 the hen's low name is well, it's not what it used to be. It's sort of a there's been a well. Uh, the uh, the tree has grown somewhat bare, and, uh, and uh, I don't believe the son has ever married or had children of his own. Uh, there is uh, speculation, perhaps, that the family will, 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 will when the mother leaves, the matriarch itself, I presume the property will fall to her son, but considering his state, uh, well, I'm not a lawyer, I don't quite know what exactly was going to happen there, but well, again, I don't like the gossip. Oh no, 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 no! Uh, 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 of course not. Uh, of course not. But but th- thank you. That's uh, all very. Uh... Oh uh, well, well, I'm I'm more than happy to help. I'm more than happy to help, ma'am. Anytime, anything I can do for you. Uh, so I'll just go. Uh, 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 if you could be so kind, would you mind waiting a few minutes to see that we're admitted? And if we are, you could just go for a drive down the block, take a little bit of a break, maybe come back in about an hour or so. It might be good for us not to have a vehicle here in case she doesn't want us to, in case she wants us to vacate early. We have an excuse oh, well, to stay. Of course, I would more than happy to. Uh, I'm sorry, so did you say if? No, no, I, I'm sorry. You go ahead and take a break for an hour or so uh, after oh, no. we are admitted. He, he, he She's fully expecting what? us. Oh, I understand. I understand. Yes, would be would be somewhat of a social. Oh, what's the, what's the word? Uh, faux pas, faux pas. I would imagine. Yes, it would to arrive unannounced and such. Yes, uh, as far as I know, the family doesn't take visitors uh, too often. Maybe at all. I'm not really sure. Anyhow, it's none of my business. I'll go ahead and just back away and leave you all too. And you see, he just starts rolling the car backwards a little bit further down, and eventually just kind of stops and leans out, kind of gives you a little wave. Um, pastor looking around, uh, you can see that again, there's, uh, there's definitely a wrought iron gate blocking the drive. There's a slight incline up to that plantation house. Uh, there is this like six foot tall stone wall that seems to surround a gargantuan size of the property. Uh, definitely swamp is kind of starting to compete. Like you can tell the swamp is starting to win, uh, in ways that probably, 20, 50 years ago, it didn't. Uh, and you can even see kind of on the horizon here and there, something sticking out of the swamp water around left and right, like stone here, stone there, suggesting that maybe there were other buildings kind of outside this wall here and there. Um, would anybody like to do anything? Could somebody really live out here? Conditions are horrible. I rolled my sleeves down my forehead. Can we get inside? It, it it was quite the quite the drive out out here was was it was it not I haven't uh, Chicago can get humid but uh, humidity in the south is just another another animal entirely uh, Pastor Wood might, might you uh, I uh, didn't uh, go through all my bags might it be okay if I borrowed your uh, handkerchief there oh, of course here you go she dabs a bit it's soaked it's like with soap. soaking wet yeah. <laughs> 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 but I'm not going to turn you down. <laughs> Steven gets it. Steven sweats as much as I do. We get it. <laughs> All right. So uh, what's the plan? Uh, is the gate locked? Uh, it very much looks so. It's a private property. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was there like a, a bell or something? Nearby? There is in fact a bell. Yeah, there is. A yeah. Bell. Beverly will no nonsense. Go up, ring the bell. And uh, okay. meanwhile leans over to Pastor Wood. It's like, that was incredibly clever. 
Remind me to tell you about my favorite dime novel about a Texas Ranger. So, I, I'm not as good with my letters, but I'm not sure what you're referring to. What was clever? <laughs> talking to the driver, telling him to, to leave. Oh, I just felt like it was time for him to take a break. It was a long drive. Gives an annoying wink. Sarah's <laughs> <laughs> such a good hype woman. <laughs> Whoop. Sorry, didn't mean to. There's a goat here. Uh, a goat. Uh, that is <laughs> definitely not the right sound. That's Jeff's alternate persona. Who's double D? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I accidentally did I my bleedest button when I meant to do my <laughs> yeetest button. So that you hear some dogs barking. <laughs> As you see, I want Virginia Henslow to talk like Double D. As you see, coming out, <laughs> not of the plantation house, uh, but of a small little college, kind of off to the side, uh, you can see an older man, uh, African American. He's wearing this uh, this hat, uh, wide brimmed, uh, might be straw. You're not entirely sure. Uh, you can see as he's coming up, he's got this pitchfork that he's just kind of carrying with him, almost like it's a cane. The Tongs are kind of pointed up to the sky. And you can see there's running around him, kind of sniffing uh, at the sound of the bell, kind of looking up. There's a bark or two. You can see there's three large hound dogs. Uh, you would imagine anyone who's ever had a dog or might have any interest in dog, like they almost look like they've got like massive blood in them. That's how big they are. They're these huge things. They don't seem to be like knocking them over, but they're kind of just running around. He comes up to the other side, uh, and you can see that he's just kind of like moving his tongue around, and he's just, and as he does, like you can kind of see glimpses of these huge gaps in his teeth here and there. Uh, I'll go ahead and share a little picture with those folks. For the first time the since you all have landed, well, not maybe not for the first time, but but uh, well, actually no, for the first time, Jared. Seems to visibly relax a little. Like she always has a big smile on, but she's been a little uncomfortable the whole time. But like seeing this man, like for some reason, like relaxes her. So he comes to a stop on the other side of the gate, and he's just kind of le- he's got his pitchfork here, kind of leaning on it. Puts the second arm up, just kind of staring at y'all as the dogs are kind of looking too. Well, hello, sir. We're here to speak with uh, Miss Virginia Henslow. Visitors, are you welcome here? What about to the- say hi to those dogs? Can are you I asking say him? Hi to those dogs, just real quick. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, sir. We are. I do. Apologize for the intrusion. I realize that per- perhaps we, sh- we should have uh, phoned ahead, but we would absolutely love if if we could just um, just take a take a take a quick meeting with a uh, with Miss Virginia. Better than I welcome here. Y- yes, I we've we uh, unfortunately we we don't uh, have our. We don't have our our vehicle at, at the moment, and, and a, 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 a drink of water would, would just just be uh, just what we need in the middle of the afternoon. Did when Pastor would told the guy to back away? Did he tell him to back away, like go for a drive? Didn't you tell him specifically to wait until you wait got until we in? were admitted yeah. and then leave? So yeah, so he's like, well, I figure it that there's a vehicle. You hop on in the railway. Well, yeah, You're right. I, I'll could. flag him down. And I turn around and I wave to him, uh, specifically trying to look like we're good, <laughs> hoping that he gets the idea to leave. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. You told him until you went inside. So this is going to be a roll to see if he does this. That's uh, right. So That's it's not going to be an automatic. Amazing. I would say. Oh God! What could the what could we roll? What do you want to roll for this? What do we think? Um, uh, psychoanalysis, psychology, persuade. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I feel like persuade is like waving, wa- like waving psychology. your hat a bit or something. <laughs> I'll take psychology. Okay. The idea of like trying to like demonstrate maybe with your body language or whatever. Look meaningful. All right, so I need a seventy-three for this. Mm-hmm. Come on, Norse Foundry dice. Uh, that is a thirty-nine. Okay. Nice. 
And so you see kind of waves and then he turns, almost kind of does a three point turn, nearly backs it into one of the swamps and starts driving away. Well, no, I, I'm sorry. I tried to flag him down. I told him not to leave until we were in inside. I, I don't know why he would just turn around like that. It's hard to find a reliable driver. Could we perhaps use a phone to call ourselves a new cab? No. Oh, I just... I just have to say, it, it's been such a, a long travel day that we've had. We, we've actually um, flown down here just specifically to kind of have, have a chat with, with Miss Virginia. And I'm just wondering, what might it take for us to be able to uh, gain admittance just, just for, just for a, a brief respite? Okay. Uh, go ahead and make a roll. Um, I'll take okay. charm. I'll take persuasion. Um, however, I'm going to need a hard success on any of this now. And I want to set this. I want to set the stakes here. Hard success doesn't mean you get what you want. It just maybe you get an answer a to little, like, yeah. your first question. Yeah. 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 Uh, 70 for either one. So, um, okay. You know, uh, you know, 35 okay. or better. All right, so I rolled a 72, so I'm going to take the luck. I will figure out the math later. Yeah, 37. Okay. Well, I figured y'all weren't invited. But I didn't invite you. Miss Virginia didn't invite you. Y'all ain't welcome here. You all want to. Quite the contrary. A little man named Douglas invited us. Mr. Henslow. In a roundabout fashion, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, through some letters that we received, yes. Mm-hmm. He put his name in the paper and said you can come in here. We're acting as agents on behalf of the person he did invite to pick up a parcel that was left for him. Well, uh, well, I figure it. Unless you got a piece of paper, got Mr. Henslow's name on it, specifically saying you can come on in. Unless you got that, you ain't invited. Well, I, I, I do believe we have something, uh, just, just, just like that. So the, the yeah. letter that says that the, uh, the book is there. Hmm. And so to kind of shuffle through the letters and see see all of them in his hand, in his hand. Um, and then she'll find the letter with this return address that talks about uh, the book being there. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Sir, I would like to get Miss Virginia's permission to visit her son. Your name is Virginia's permission. Go on down the drawing room and you ask to sing. That's what you do. Miss Virginia, don't want to talk to you. Okay. Um, would it be all right if I left a message for you to give to Miss Virginia to see if she'd be willing to contact me? I suppose that's all right. Okay. And then, so, Beverly will kind of step aside and dig through her notes and she will write this letter to Miss Virginia requesting an audience with her. Um, ah, she's writing that. Uh, she, she was looking at the dogs the entire time. <laughs> okay. Can I uh, just pet the dogs while she, while Dr. Q writes the letters? Can I just say hi? Are you asking him or are you asking one of them? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm asking him, but my eyes are very much on the dog. I'm, like, not looking at him. <laughs> well, I'm figuring that's between you and the dogs. Yeah. And she gets down on her knees and sticks out a head, like, in, in to, for, for the dog to smell her. Okay. Um, roll an animal handling test, please. We'll see how that goes. That should be it. <laughs> What's your animal handling? Like? 
<laughs> Good a rip, and you oh, have luck. Don't worry. I'm going to spend all the luck. <laughs> so it's fine. Um, I, I got a 50, um, and I am happy to spend 45 luck on petting a dog. <laughs> <laughs> you start petting the dog. And it's kind of like in your hand, like in your face, a little bit. You got sweat all over here and there. So they're just kind of going to town. Second one comes and kind of does the same thing. Next one kind of comes and they're all just kind of, mm, and he's just not even paying attention. And everything, you just kind of look up, smiling up at Beverly or Marie. And then all of a sudden, uh, as you feel one of them bite down on your hand, uh, go ahead and take three points of damage. Uh, as one of them bites down that had previously been in such great uh great friendship and kinship with you and you see like this big kind of bite mark the teeth itself of the like on your hand like just kind of pierce right in kind of bleeding you can see the the oh. sort of where the canines themselves kind of pierce and everything just kind of creates this big old thing oh baby what did i do to you just kind of looks up at you kind of turns his head and it's almost it's 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 sort of uncanny how similar like his demeanor is to the man's Demeter, just kind of staring at you. As if he didn't do anything wrong. Sean, yeah. you're bleeding. Let me see that. And I take my handkerchief and I start wrapping oh, it around I, her I hands. Oh, I, and I must have got and, him behind Izzy or wrong no, or something. Oh, Pastor, Pastor Wood, there's there's so much sweat on that. That that's that, that's 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 not. No, that, this that's is the fresh one I was saving for the drive back. I, I get yeah, I get hurt a lot. It, it, it's. it's uh, sir, sir, I, I, she's she's bleeding. We 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 need to get get on this right right away. Is is there any way that we can go inside and get 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 some fresh water and, and just get that that cleaned out? Uh, just I, I would hate for a, just the, the whole hour back at that that could that could start to and it that could start to get infected there. a lot there. more than Shiva was <laughs> expecting, and she's kind of slowly like. Uh, I'm I'm not used to seeing this much blood on me. <laughs> oh oh oh! See, we we, we need to making people bleed. We, we we need to get get her 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 sitting down and 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 that 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 driver just took off and 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 she just should not be standing out here in the heat with losing all of that blood. No. Am I, am I gonna be okay? <laughs> this this win, Am I gonna be okay? Oh. I knew I, we should have called. <laughs> I should There's have, no I guarantee should have that she even has a word. phone, so don't worry about it. There's no guarantee I meant, that she or has like, a phone. Are telegrams a thing? Does he not Sir, care about I that letter? Your, yeah, you're, you're working on the letter, so like we can still go with that. No, He'll take your letter not, from you. Yeah. Do you not yeah. care about the Douglas Oh, letter. we want to keep it. We just wanted to show it to him. So if Marie shows him all the other letters. <laughs> well, I figured... None of these are inviting y'all in here. Y'all seem like nice people. So I'm going to tell you something. You want in here? You ain't on yes, over. Yes, sir. You speak to Mr. Angelo. You he put his name to paper. You bring that paper to me. I'll open these gates. You can come inside. Up to that point, I ain't over the gate. Sir, I appreciate your directness. I, I truly do. However, that really was our only car. So it, I understand you don't want to let us inside. We won't push that matter any further. Perhaps you could go inside and call us a, a car. Otherwise, we'll be standing here all day with nowhere to go. As you're well aware, it's quite a long walk back. Uh, Go ahead and roll a fast talk, Pastor. Oh, I'm not very good, at least. That's, well, that's what you're doing. <laughs> you're literally fast talking. Yeah, uh, that's fair. That's fair. I'll take some audience boost so I have at least a, a chance. Got it. Got it. Uh oh oh oh! That's an eleven under twenty five. Fantastic. Oh, yes. Uh, that's actually a hard success. Um. Okay. Okay. So. Do we have criticals in this game? Why am I yes. blanking? Uh, it's it's criticals. Like if you roll a one, I believe uh, is like the only actual. But like the doubles and stuff like that, that's a delta green thing. Okay, okay, my bad. Uh, so there's tiers of success. There's regular success. There's hard success. There's extreme success. And then there's the critical if you roll a one. 
Okay, so in this case, you would you got a heart success, which is pretty good. Mm. Mm. He just kind of grumbles, and he slowly turns around, and he starts walking up the incline towards the plantation house. And he looks back towards the dogs. Mm. Hey! And he continues up the path. And you see him go inside the plantation house. Well, now that we have some breathing room, I turn around and address the group. Any suggestions? Here's how far this gate premieres the house. Well, I, I, uh, I, I do you believe can certainly he's... look. It would require some trekking, but you can definitely yeah, do that if that's what you want to do. Okay. How many dogs are there? Three. They're big ones, too. Three dogs, but five of us. Well, I, I do. What we can, we can start with the, just the, the, the genteel approach to this. We, he's given us exactly what it would take for us to get into this, into this house. We, we were going to go visit uh, the, the, the Mister anyway. So we can certainly, I think, uh, Beverly, the, the letter is a, is, is a wonderful idea. So she at least knows that there's someone who's interested in having a conversation with her. And then we see if we could perhaps get this letter from from Mr. Henslow. And then if we can't, we absolutely could find an, another approach. Yes, the excitement of discovery has briefly robbed us of our manners. And we are in the South, and following manners is a, quite an important uh, thing to do here, I uh, do recall. Well, I was born and raised in the South, and where I come from, you don't turn people away from your door if they're in need. That is, I, I it, if if she if she is is of uh, advanced age, I, I I certainly would would not put it past anyone to uh, be protective of who sort of gets gets let in. So I I, I can I, I can appreciate. Uh, Pastor Wood, your handkerchief has been appropriated to us <laughs> as a as a. Makes a bandage and Shama has now taken off her belt and like. Would me rolling first aid on it some, help at all? Like makeshift tourniquet. I don't it think stop, you like, need a tourniquet. It's, it's just a dog bite. She's like, convinced <laughs> that this with that worry was completely serious <laughs> and she's Probably on rap. death's door. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and if if, if, if Marie notices Shima sort of like seeming to to worry about it and she'll just sort of just say oh oh dear i i was i was just trying to Im impress upon the gentleman that that perhaps entry into the home might help your condition but i i do actually believe that oh. you'll be just fine oh, oh. you're all so I was, smart I, I, I was attempting to use a, a little of of uh pastor wood's uh turn of phrase to, to see what what that could do you, but he is you are all Miss O'Brien, you go ahead and keep that handkerchief. Uh, we can they, settle accounts they, over it later. I'll, I'll wash it before I give it back to you. Because the ED is covered in blood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So so I think we're waiting for the car then to leave. Is that what we're deciding? I'm okay. Going around the property. Patrick's, Patrick's already left. Uh, so Patrick, it is a swampy... Uh, whoo, whoops, sorry about that. Uh, it is a very swampy land and as i was saying before it looks like the swamp is starting to win uh as you start to sort of follow the outer wall and start weaving your way around it and it is extensive property uh and as you move around you notice um well, i'll tell you this how about this do you have any skills that you would want to roll while you're kind of looking around here patrick is there anything in in, in particular uh that you're looking for or there is anything that you think patrick would be doing at this point uh, I can give you some general stuff, but like if you have a spot idea. hidden, I think it's probably my best one. Absolutely. Yeah. Give me a spot. Hidden. Stuff. Oh. Yeah. I think that sounds great. That works for me. I was thinking of praise and you were just going to like come back just knowing how much this place has gone into disrepair because you actually have some like a praise. That's true. But <laughs> I failed either way with an 80. Okay. Uh, you're welcome to spend luck if you wanted to, but I know you already spent luck a lot yeah, of luck I to get your... All. Your hot, uh, awesome hotel room. So what you see is you're traveling around that the only two buildings that you really notice inside the wall um, are, again, the main plantation house and what looks like some kind of college cottage from which this man came. 
uh, you also notice that there is like you are at, at certain points on like tracking through muddy, muddy ground and even sloshing through some swamp water. Uh, so your shoes, your pants, all of it's kind of getting all, all beaten up, and messed up. You notice that all around the swamp and the muck, there are abandoned sheds here and there that seem to, you know, kind of, kind of have grown increasingly dilapidated and are in various states of disrepair. Uh, you can see that near the edge of the, the Western property wall, there appears to be like, um, like a, a car, uh, that is sort of, uh, partially sticking up out of the uh, the water itself as if it's like the swamp is is eating it it's definitely rusted you can see like the the insignia of a ford uh like a, like the ford motor cars right there um you notice that there are plenty of ruins all around that appear to be uh popping up out of the swamps themselves bare walls broken doorways uh of of once standing buildings here and there um one point you see a like almost what looks like a chimney maybe popping up out of the water uh definitely there was a time when there was sort of much much more and i would say you're probably a smart enough man to realize that like this these buildings once housed folk uh, and they have been swallowed and swallowed and slowly and slowly the swamp is just eating this, this sort of area. Um, you notice, see, what else do you notice? Um, well, since you failed and all you were really looking to try to figure out was the, was the wall. It does in fact go across, like go around three sides of the property. The fourth side, however, is like this expanse of swamp. And it's not like the little things that you've been trudging around with at your ankles, like swamp. You even see a little, you know, kind of splash around in the water as it looks like an alligator. Just grab something and duck down a bit here and there. You can see what you originally thought might have just been a log floating, but suddenly churns and change direction. And it is, you know, it is not just nothing. Uh, there, are, there are trees and stuff hanging down, but for the most part, it just seems like this very uh, kind of oppressive looking muck. Uh, that ex that extends out in front of you. Uh, that seems to be the to only place not covered. On the sides, uh, are your your? I would say your. Unless anyone came with you, they probably lost sight of you. Um, whether or not anyone on the ground sees you, that's a different story. I'm gonna try hopping a fence in the non swampy area, like either the west or east side. Okay. okay. Um, let's go with a stealth test. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna say that you're you're probably capable. I'm actually jumping the thing, um, but let's do a stealth test to see if you can kind of get over uh, in any amount of quiet. Or that's a hard success or extreme. Okay, wow. You fantastic. You hop over. Uh, I'll say this. You find this rusted gate and it's just um, it's probably the easiest thing to climb. It's it's definitely rusted in place you can't figure out you can't kind of budget over but it gives you a better set of handholds and footholds than just trying to climb up this this stone wall and you're able to kind of use that to sort of spider-man up and over and you hop down and you are now on the other side of the wall you look off we'll say to the east and you can see there is your uh, there there's like the gate there's the path that winds up towards the plantation house and you can see the dogs don't appear to have noticed you currently so you're on the other side What's your plan? I'm going to try to close in on the property. Just take a look around. Maybe a window. Any basement. There's no basement. There's a swamp land. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. So if you're, you're trying to, are you trying to get up to the plantation house or are you trying to get over to that cottage? What, what's the difference? Just... Well, Plantation House is a fairly big house and it's sitting on top of a, a slight incline. And this cottage is this smaller building that was closer to the wall from which the old man that you've been talking to uh, emerged with his dogs. Let's go to the big fancy one. Okay. So you start sneaking up to the big fancy house. Now, as you get closer, one of the things that you notice immediately is that despite the plantation house looking some level of pristine some like from from when you first drove up the closer and closer you get to it 
the real you realize more and more how in relative dirtiness it is. You can see there's sort of um, you can see there's like streaks of mud. You can see there's uh, moss stains, greenish tint, that kind of stuff. These heavy leaves that are uh, sloshed in the ground here and there or packed against it. Uh, it definitely has a um, has a much more dilapidated feel than, than at first glance. Uh, the house itself is fairly tall. It's got shuttered windows for the most part. Looks like there's columns along the way and a wraparound porch and a balcony or two on the second level. Um, so you sneak up, you find your, you're going to basically climb up onto the porch and peek into a window. Now, you know, the basic way that, uh, that the man had gone in, he'd gone back inside. And so you maybe, you pick the side of the, uh, you pick the side of the, the house itself, uh, and you peek inside and you see a, a kind of a, you know, basically a cramped place. It's not, um, actually I'll tell you what, roll a luck test, Patrick. How much luck do you have after you spent have so much earlier? Oh, gosh. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll see what room maybe you look at as you peek in a window. 46. That's a fail. Okay. Uh, so as you peek inside, um, I'll say that you are... So you're looking to the east, so... Um, you see what basically looks like a, a living room. You're kind of peeking through a window just next to a fireplace. Um, you can see a kind of old uh, sort of uh, upholstered uh, couch and sort of a, a, like a, a lounge, like a chase lounge. You can see what looks like some kind of beaten up leather chair in the corner. Uh, you can see there's various, uh, you know, tchotchkes and things that are on shelves. It definitely has a lived in feel to it. Um, and you can see the flickering of what you imagine is a fire coming out of the fireplace. Uh, you don't see anybody, though. I'm going to snoop around until I start hearing dogs barking or some sort of indication that the man's returned. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cut back to the rest of them. Um, what are you doing? Uh, as Shima, I know Shima has been, you've been kind of patching her up a bit. Beverly, you've written your letter. Pastor, what do you look around? You see Patrick's not there. Same thing with Marie. The guy just went up. Um, what do you all do? Give you a beat before something else happens. I feel it would be better not to split the party any further. I mean, we can try to bluff that there were only four of us, but we he'd be pretty suspicious if all of us were gone. Uh, if, if we need to, we can just say that he needed to, uh, nature called. Yeah. Th thank you. Thank you. I was looking for the, the, the way to say that. Uh, and Marie will just sort of take a peek at, uh, the note that, uh, Beverly wrote. Oh, I, 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 I do think this will pique her interest. To, to, to let us in, per perhaps I, I think that was it. Well done. I hope so. Okay. I do still intend to gather that letter or permission slip from their son. Oh, absolutely. And and if all else fails, we can always forge a letter. He, he said he just needed to look at a letter, and I'm sure between all of us, we could always make one if we needed to. Any of the four of you would like to roll a spot hidden test? Sure. This is to see if you can see Patrick sneaking <laughs> onto the property and up to the window of this plantation house. Okay, I always forget in these games. I rolled double lolly. That's 100 in does most it, games, but Mothership throws me off for every game. Now. I know, it's always, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that is, yeah, we treat it like 100. Beverly um, is too wrapped up in writing her note and uh, making sure everything's correct grammatically that she does not notice nothing. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I got uh, an extreme okay. success. I got a four under a 75. Okay. I will say uh, that I just got a six to five hundred seventy. So sixty-five hundred seventy. Nice. Okay. Uh, I will say that the extreme success by Pastor Wood is enough because Patrick did roll very well in the stealth test. That you see a small shadow. It's overcast. It's not like dark, dark yet, but it's definitely like late afternoon. Sun's not particularly penetrating some of the hanging Spanish moss, and. When you look up, you see there is a man 
that is peeking through one of the windows on the western side of the house. I would imagine you can very easily probably tell other people too, but that's what you see. The dogs have not noticed yet. If I, I have actually, um, I've actually rolled for them, and I'll give you a beat. What do you do with that information, Pastor? Well, Miss Oberon, I do believe it's a good, good thing that you know, those dogs have a scent of your blood. Otherwise, they'd be going for Patrick right now. He's overlooking in that window. Jamie, you can did look he... over and you see it. <laughs> you can oh, see him now. Jump the fence! Oh. <laughs> Gosh. You allowed to do this? Now? I can't jump the fence. We're really good Let's at jumping fences. Not do that. We are seeking permission to enter this home. Oh. Okay, because if we're allowed to do that, I can do that. I. <laughs> well, let's just hold on another beat and find out if we are allowed to do that. We'll say that's when the door opens up. We see Patrick. The front door opens up. Patrick sneaks around the back side of the house, though. Just perfect timing. And that is the extent of your extreme success. Like at this point now, <laughs> you have used up your extreme success on your stealth roll. As you make it around to the back of the house, Patrick, you look through another window. Uh, there was like one more that went into the living room from a different angle. But then you keep going and you can see you're now looking into a dining room. Same thing. Old. There's a... Um, there's definitely like there's a, a kind of a lengthy kind of you think maybe an oak table. It's got a tablecloth over top of it. There's some fixtures and things. It's not in the greatest of condition, but it's not like there's swamp water on the ground. Like it's it's definitely the it has the look of a person who maybe doesn't keep up as easily as they used to. From what you have learned that Miss Virginia Henslow is of advanced age. Uh, and that is what you see as you look in the second window. Um, the rest of you, you watch as this old man. Uh, again, using this pitchfork very much like a walking stick or a cane comes down, uh, and the uh, the dogs are kind of at this point kind of barking here and there as it comes up, and he's like, "Go down that way, Mama, and North. Someone's gonna pick you up there, and take you back, man. Now then, yes. Uh, here is my letter for Miss." Miss Enzo, uh, I was just wanted to inquire, is there anything that I should be sensitive about when speaking with Mr. Douglas Henslow? Any topics that we should avoid? No. He reaches out and he takes the, the card from you. <laughs> and then, uh, apparently my manners are atrocious today. I, I never caught your name. Hmm. Your name... John. John, well, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for taking our letter and to express our interest. And my name is uh, Beverly Key, and she'll reach out, Dr. Beverly Key, and she'll reach out to give him a handshake. He looks down at it for a second. Then he reaches out a hand, dirty hand, you can sell, mm -hmm. you know, and he reaches out and he shakes it. Mm. And then he holds it for a second. Weren't there five of you? Where any other one go? I believe uh, nature called. Uh, roll a fast talk. Fast talk. Okay. Yeah. Do I even have that? Do you, do you have five like helping, everybody else in fast talk? Assistant? Yeah. Uh, I, have I mean, yes, uh, it is a thing. You could potentially assist somebody by kind of coming up with. Um, how you're actually helping that could potentially give maybe like a bonus die or something like that. This depends. You just kind of tell me what it is you're doing. Um, uh, I'd, I'd love to in, in this moment feeling like this is probably going to end very quickly. Be like, um, and hold up my bloody hand uh, again, like all earnestness, not thinking to use help me with the fast dog. Like, I'm very sorry I upset your dogs. Dogs usually love me. I, I'm not sure what I must have done to upset your dog, and I'm very sorry, Mr. John. Carruthers. Mr. Carruthers. Mr. John, Mr. Carruthers. I, I am sorry about upsetting your dog. Mm. All right, Beverly, how did you do? Sorry, I was startled by how desperately my dog is howling at this moment. He knows. Gabe, Gabe just left to go get dinner, so he's depression. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh okay. my goodness! Yeah, oh, goodness. that's that's a um. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's see. Where's... I feel you like we're like all trying. Sixty-two points of luck. I'm more than happy to to take that. Perfectly fine. That's a lot of luck. Did she get oh. the assist? Yeah, oh, you can how roll. How do I do assist? Uh, it's basically you could take you could have taken like a bonus die. Uh, roll another d10. Basically, I think you're sc- you're you're not going to pass, but you could potentially get a cheaper. Be cheaper. Yeah. yeah so go ahead and roll another die. Cheaper luck. Buy. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, oh no. Okay. So that no no no, that's direction. actually good in this case because it means that she. I think she just rolled a seven. Um, yeah. Which yeah. Me- would, which means you can spend two points of luck now to make that a success. Oh yeah, I'll do that. Amazing. Okay. All right. Yay. And remember that whenever you spend luck to pass something, you don't get, you do not get like the light it up for advancement. Oh, later. good. I, that was yeah. my question. And that is for what I just did fast, fast talk. talk. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mark it. Okay. 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 Uh, I think if you use the system and you like do the spend, it didn't, it didn't mark chat, it automatically. It do it. Yeah. yeah. But like, I know that a lot of us like to roll um, our Norse foundry. Uh, okay. Ma, Excellent. north, intersected. Uh, perfect. And then uh, if she does wish to have tea, like I indicated, uh, that's the hotel we're staying at, and that's uh, the number you can reach. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Ma, north, intersected. Thank yeah. you, sir. Much appreciated. Mm. And he stands there silently watching. All of it. <laughs> yeah. And then Beverly would turn to Pastor Wood. Uh, would you wait for Patrick? Uh, in our heels, it's going to take us longer to walk out there. I'm sure you'll catch up. Wait, are we trying to say out of character? Are we trying to say that Patrick went to the house to go to the bathroom? I assume that we were no, saying he I'm no, he just, he, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, he, yeah. he went out of visibility to do what he needed to do. So you're you want me to wait waiting. with Mr. Crowthers? Well, just here nearby for Patrick to come out. Probably just to keep him occupied a little bit visually so that long. Well, Mr. Crowthers, uh, are you a Christian man? <laughs> <laughs> Have you accepted Jesus into your heart? <laughs> I would like to specify this is not why we came by. Thank you, sir. Uh, And and Beverly's going to loop arms with Marie and Shima, and like we're just going to start trudging our walk down this walk. And I'm just going to start one of my 40, 50, 60 minute sermons, you know, from the beginning and just just start going. (laughs) Hopefully Patrick makes it back up to the front uh, long before you're done with one of those. At a certain point, he just turns and walks away. Uh, Patrick, you continue going around the house. Next thing you notice is a screen room. Uh, looks like there's some kind of sink back here. There's steps that kind of go up to it. Um, might even be, as you're looking through the screen, there might even be like a, like a little bathroom around a corner. Uh, and if you're looking really closely, you might even see a kitchen uh, through a door here, here or there. It's hard to say. It's not a well-lit home, uh, so you're not getting the greatest light. Uh, the living room, since the fire was going, gave you a little bit better sight, but it's a little darker, but you can you can kind of see in it. If you keep going around, there's another window now. On the, now you're on kind of like the east side of the house. You can see through that screen. You can see into the kitchen, and so you're pretty sure. Any further south, you're coming around to the front of the house now, and you might be visible uh, to the gate and the dogs. All right, I think reconnaissance is enough if I got all sides. So I'll try okay. to make my way back. And I would like another stealth roll for you to see if you can stealth your way across without being seen. 50-50. You got this. Pastor Wood is keeping him occupied. Five. Extreme. Dang. Dear oh God. my gosh. Look at you, buddy. <laughs> I will say you managed to go back the exact way you came, hop the fence, and you get away scot-free. Eventually you come around and Amazing. you see there is Pastor Wood. 
giving a evangelical uh, sermon to three very uninterested dogs who are staring him down at the gate. And uh, you can see John Carruthers is kind of sitting at the front step uh, of the uh, for a distance away so he doesn't have to hear Pastor Wood uh, of the plantation house just looking down and waiting. Uh, Marie and Beverly and, and Shima uh, are nearby. It's time to go. Would I be able to see Patrick come back or sure. at least call me back, Patrick? You know, yeah. don't leave me talking to these dogs. <laughs> oh, of course. I'm, <laughs> I'm showing up in the front. Eh? Okay. Uh, oh, Patrick. All right, so you-, you really had to relieve yourself for quite some time. Uh, thank you, Mr. Crothers. Uh, I-, I hope you do accept Jesus into your heart. We'll speak again, I'm sure. He you says to the that. dogs. <laughs> <laughs> the dogs just start yeah, I turn around. Patrick, that man has the mental range of a windshield wiper. He's a stout man. Yeah. You hear the dogs growl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll say the two of you walk away, eventually meet up uh, with ladies who had already started walking away. Um, who's got the lowest luck right now? I have 11. Go ahead and roll a luck test, Patrick. <laughs> Let's see if your driver initially comes back or or how long it basically is going to be. 65. It's like 45 minutes that you guys are out here in the swamp getting eaten by like mosquitoes. You're getting just assaulted by palmetto bugs. It's getting really, really, it's starting to get dark now. Like it's almost evening time before they finally arrive. And like you catch them kind of before the turnoff onto this part of the, the land. And they're like, and like, well, don't you all, you all look like you had a, the trouble. Uh, visit not go well. It was well. well. Oh. Yeah, well, we'll we, 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 we may need, need your services again, in fact. So, uh, well, appreciate Yes, you. ma'am. You all want to come on in and we going back on back to Savannah city proper. That would be lovely. Okay. So you guys, you guys go ahead, you get in the car and it's the same deal. You drive back. It's a little darker now. So it's a little harder. He's driving a lot slower. It's still very humid, but the, the, their temperature does go down obviously a bit. Um, you notice as you get, you know, as you're starting to get a little closer and closer, there's definitely a fog that starts to kick up and it's, and it's thick. It's like this thick fog. It's really hard to see. It kind of fills the the lanes. You even when even when you get back to like the the city itself, you can start seeing all these like kind of weird shapes and stuff kind of pop up, like kind of tangling around in the sort of middle distance. A random flapping of a flag or such uh, that like for a moment looks like something much worse. And then as you get closer, you realize it. Uh, it kind of appears. Um, little like gas lamps kind of sputter on and off here and there. And there's just all sorts of these strange shadows um, as eventually you are brought back after a few hours, evening, early evening, uh, sun is now fully down back to your hotel. Uh, so uh, what would Pastor Wood just go clean up? Get some. Yeah, rest? I think so. Uh, okay. Change my shirt. It sounds good. What about the rest of you? What would you do with the rest of your your evening? I need to freshen up as well. I muddied through swamp water. Okay. Yes, your your pants are destroyed, and the way back stank because of it, uh, as it was just nasty mud <laughs> that was just sweltering within this old fashioned car with very little air circulation and six people inside of it, uh, and it stank. Okay, so we'll say everyone goes about getting themselves cleaned up. Uh, you have a, you have the night if you wanted to do something, uh, or we could fast forward. Uh, it's sort of up to you at this point if there's an idea of what you guys want to do next. Nice I would imagine, okay. yeah, <laughs> we'll definitely want to get some food because I would imagine that uh, visiting hours for uh, the, the the Grove might have uh, Joy Grove might not continue after uh, dinner time, so perhaps that might be okay. a, an excursion for the morrow. All right. Uh, if that's the case, then we'll say that you are directed downtown. Maybe you don't want to stay at the lounge in the hotel. You're directed to a couple blocks over to a lovely restaurant of relative fine dining uh beautiful music 
Uh, Southern jazz just sort of flopping around there in the background. Marie probably gives you a, sort of a sense of home. Um, and uh, the night is, is sort of fairly nice. We'll say Pastor Winnebie retires a little earlier than everybody else, kind of disappears. He's, uh, he's I think I think he's the elder of the group, uh, if, I, if I remember correctly. So maybe he kind of turns in a little bit earlier. And then eventually you all one by one start following. Now, we'll say the night transpires without a whole lot of trouble here or there like you you know toss and turn maybe as the the heat kind of gets to you a little bit but for the most part it's a it's a decent decent sleep especially for the four of you pastor wood in his uh in his room it's probably a little bit more sweltering uh but i'll say the four of you are able to to kind of get a, a decent night's sleep and the next next day comes um what would be on the schedule for today Think. Yep. Go ahead, Mom. Oh, definitely the other address, the sanctuary. Okay. The sanitarium. The sanitarium. Yep. Joy Grove for sure. Okay. All right. Uh, anyone who wanted, by the way, I think you could have wrote a first aid on Shima. So was, I think recover one HP. Uh, it's not a full HP, but it'll be a one HP if you want to do that, just to apply first aid. Once you actually get back to the hotel, you can get some clean things as opposed to putting the sweaty. I'm actually the first, like, I, I have skills. You have the best first aid. Is that something I can sure. do for myself? It's just a uh, I could I'm also sure assist you. Care. I got a 50. Sure. Uh, cool. Is that uh, one hit point? Uh, go ahead and roll your first aid with uh, with a bonus die. Uh, and then, because uh, you're getting one from Beverly. And then um, if you're successful, you can get a, uh, a hit point back. We'll say as you, uh, as you tend to your wound. Okay, so my su I succeeded with a seventeen. Uh, do okay. I need? Do I roll the bonus die? Uh, you can if you want to see if you get like a crit or an extreme success. Or something. Uh, sure. So, yeah. Uh, but still succeeded, but worse. Uh, twenty-seven. Okay. All right. So if that's the case, go ahead and take a point of HP back. The two of you managed to clean the wound out. Definitely, Pastor Woods handkerchief to help stop the bleeding but maybe cause some other <laughs> problems inflammation yeah uh, yeah i, I yeah. might have heard pastor wood snarkily say that uh he actually had a uh a spare handkerchief that he was planning to use on the return trip that he handed over so perhaps okay. that uh shima got the clean sweaty, version though, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that may did not okay uh, so then night passes rather uneventfully. You don't hear from Frank Kearns, uh, and you all wake up in the morning, bright, early sun's up. Uh, you can see Shima that your hand is feeling better. Uh, but there's definitely a kind of a bruise, uh, from where the dog bit you. And you can still see that it's going to take probably a little time for some of the puncture wounds to sort of scab over a bit, but otherwise you think you'll be fine. You don't think it's uh, like terribly infected or going to cause any issues, but you can kind of feel it a little bit as you, as you flex or maybe pick up like a, a fork or other, other utensil, uh, as you're eating in the morning, like there's a little bit of a reminder that you got bit, um, but yeah, morning comes around. You can easily get a cab if you want to go check out the, um, the other address uh, on uh, West Henry Street. That we do. Okay. So fourth with. Sure. Yeah. And so you kind of continue traveling through. You can. Like, you, one of the things you notice when you wake up in the morning, you kind of wait out in the street for your cab to arrive. Like the smell of the harbor is like particularly, uh, particularly potent in the morning. Um, it is again very very humid and. I would say all of you, even those of you who are not of like the Southern persuasion, like pastor would might be, it's such a thickness in the air that it does feel like you could almost like, like it's just so oppressive. This, uh, this humidity, it almost feels like, like you could just squeeze the air and it would just rain down on top of you. Um, eventually though, you do get your, uh, you get your cab, you get driven over in the direction of, um, uh, of joy grove. Uh, when you approach, you can see this this hulking kind of red brick Victoria building. It's got this these kind of tall, narrow windows. There's all sorts of these little gothic details and flourishes that are standing out left and right. There's a, a significant amount of like verticality to it. It gets very stark in its height, but there's also all these different like decorative details. Like 
if you hadn't have already researched it and learned that like this opened up as a hospital for years, it could have been anything else. It could have been a school, it could have been like a factory, it could have been anything. It's, it looks as like the entire bottom half. And there's a couple of stories, uh, like the entire bottom half of the building is just kind of covered in kudzu. It's almost like this, like this hand is coming up out of the earth, just sort of gripping and almost kind of pulling the, the building down into the ground a bit. Um, as you start to weave your way up uh, and kind of get let out in front of the building itself, very over, there's a lot of oversized windows. You can see there's many who have iron bars and overgrown ivy kind of hanging down, drooping here and there. Um, and the there's like a couple steps, these beautiful steps that themselves, you can see these little peaks of kind of weeds and things that the uh, groundskeeper hasn't quite gotten to as you take the steps up. Uh, push inside and you can see that you are now in the entry hall uh, to Joy Grove. Um, it is uh, immediately upon entering. It is a very large reception desk. Uh, it's just like kind of half circular desk that extends almost from one side to the next. You can see that there's hallways both to your right and to your left. And it looks like there's a like a uh, like an office right behind you as well. Uh, you can see that sitting uh, at the table behind there is a, a nurse that seems to be working or a receptionist working the the front desk um kind of another sort of mid 30s or so uh kind of has a uh, she's she doesn't have a particularly welcome vibe as you come in but she's also not you know too you know, too uh too ornery but she sees the group if you walk in we'll assume pastor wood is with you as well and she's like uh well uh welcome you all to uh to joy grove is there something i can uh so can I can help this uh, this eclectic group of uh, of visitors with? Uh, well, yes, absolutely. Uh, thank thank you very much for the the, the warm welcome this morning. Um, we we are actually looking to uh, to uh, call upon um, one of your residents here. Uh, I I see uh, visitation all, all all five. Okay, uh, if I could, where is that sign and sheet? And she reaches over and she grabs. Uh, from right on top of, uh, right on top of like this desk, kind of hands over to, if you can go ahead and just, uh, just fill in your names, uh, and can kind of please identify uh, the name of the patient that you're coming to visit. That would be very, very kind. Um, family members, uh, friends, consultants. Yeah, man, kind of filling like, out names, speaking. This is the only way she knows that'll be helpful. So she's <laughs> start writing everyone's names. Okay. Uh, yeah, yes, we we're actually just uh, visiting family, and they kind of sent us the, the, this way to uh, call upon well, him. I see, I see. Well, okay, go right ahead. And uh, when you guys put your names in, uh, so they, they're basically asking you to sign in and to kind of identify the patient that you're looking to see. Uh, do you all, are you truthful with everything you forthright, or does anyone try to pull a fast one here? Yeah, we give our names. We give his name. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so she takes it over. Okay, let's see. Well, very nice to meet you. Very nice. She kind of goes through them all. And she kind of introduces herself. Uh, and you can see that she's got like a little name tag. It just says like, it just says Bethany May on it. And uh, she's like, oh, oh, come to see Mr. Mr. Henslow. Uh, I see. Uh, would you all mind just waiting there one second? If you want, you can take a seat right over there. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be right back in just one second, if you don't mind. Oh yeah, yes. Is, um, I'm I'm sorry. Is, is there any is there any trouble? Oh no no no, not at all. Just uh, just Dr. Keaton. Um, just certain patients of his. He's uh, he has a hands on approach with, and uh, seems Mr. Henslow here. There's a uh, well, there's a flag in his file that should anyone kind of come visit, just uh, Dr. Keaton, just like it, just be just one moment. He's just oh, we've, moment. we've heard such right good there. things about Dr. Keaton. Yes. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Thank, thank you very oh, much. Well, he, he's, he's an excellent man. I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. And you see her just walk a couple steps down one of the hallways and you hear a knock on the door and you can almost kind of vaguely, hear, uh, uh, Dr. Keaton, there's, uh, there's some, there's some folks here that are, that are asking about, uh, Mr. Douglas Henslow. You guys have a couple beats if there's anything you wanted to do or say to each other before, she returns. Was there anything that you wanted to do? Uh, uh, Marie wanted to just try to do a quick psychology on her re reaction. Sure. Uh, yeah, go ahead and you can roll that. Oh, no. That is a 97 over 50. Okay. Um, as far as you can tell, she's just doing her job. 
Yep. Beverly would suggest for Marie to use her wonderful singing skills to offer to put on a performance for uh, maybe the group um, if they have like activity hour or anything going on right now. Uh, well, if this ends up being a hard no on the uh, reason that we were here, uh, that is certainly something that I could try. Uh, the gentleman that we spoke with yesterday seemed to make it sound like all we had to do was come here and uh, share his name and, and ask for an audience. And that's what we were going to be given. So this is a little bit puzzling. This is not what we were told to expect. Uh, it, uh, patient by patient basis, I presume uh, he might have some triggers that need to be avoided. Hi. I, I I suppose. Uh, Patrick sort of or Shima, did you did you all have anything that you were doing? No, it was a perfectly acceptable answer. I just wanted to give you a beat if you had if you had anything. Uh, Shima's gonna ask um, Miss One. Uh, what have you heard about Doctor Keaton? You said you heard wonderful things about him. What have you heard? Oh, I I just. Sorry, you, 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 yeah, well, they were shared some information and, and so she, she sort of stumbles a bit because she makes a habit of just sort of saying things to be complimentary of course, and yeah, doesn't yeah. usually yeah, sort yeah. of get called on like it, where she got like very oh, guileless. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it, it, it was just sort of some, some re research that, that I, you, you all had, had, had done it. I, I just, you know, oh. try, trying to grease the wheels and all, you know. From the lovely clerk oh. at the city hall that I was speaking to. Oh, okay, okay. And and Marie sort of feels a little <laughs> bit called out, like she's usually sort of quite <laughs> kind of confident there's, and chatty. And then she's like, <laughs> to be super clear, there's like no judgment in. Oh no, in no, I didn't. The question, <laughs> yeah. just pure curiosity of like, oh, what have you heard? <laughs> yeah, I mean, doc doctor, doctor, didn't you hear that he might be uh, next in line? If the uh, Dr. Teak uh, isn't in charge anymore, that, didn't you hear that uh, he might be uh, next in line to run this place? Oh, uh, yes. So we might, good to know, good to know, keep that little bit of information. And we'll say it's around this time uh, that Nurse Bethany uh, Nurse Bethany May and a, uh, a man she presumed to be Dr. Keaton, man in his we'll say is, is sort of his 40s or so, kind of salt and pepper, uh, tall, fairly slender looking man, um, comes uh, comes inside. He's like, he kind of looks around, like they exchange it. They exchange a little kind of quiet word to one another and nurse kind of points off in your direction. He's like, well, good, good morning, I say. Good morning. It is a pleasure to meet all of you. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Jonathan Keaton. I am one of the attending uh, uh, the medical staff uh, here at Joe Gross Sanitarium. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. Um, I have been told by my, my, my wonderful nurse, Bethany May, here that you all are interested in visiting one of our patients, a man by the name of Douglas Henslow. Is this, uh, is this correct? Uh, that is correct. Yes. Oh, fantastic. That's wonderful. Now, I, I don't mean to pry, but uh, I must say that, well, Mr. Henslow was one of my patients, and I have, well, his his good care uh, at the very heart of all of my considerations, and I just, any time uh, certain folk uh, such as him uh, receive visitors, I just uh, I must inquire as to the nature of that visit. I, are you all, I, 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 I'm been told by Miss Bethany May here that you all uh, were sent here by the family. Is that correct? Miss Virginia Henslow sent you all over here. No, friends of friends. So uh, we're kind of delivering correspondence on behalf of friends. Oh, I see. I see. Is there a is there a particular friend? Uh, is it a friend of yours? A friend of Mister Mister Henslow's? Uh, a friend of Mister Henslow's. I see. I see. Uh, now, I, I must warn you that Mr. Henslow is in a very delicate state. Uh, yes. Uh, I wanted to inquire, are there topics that we should avoid mentioning to him that might be possible triggers? Oh, well, uh, it's a, that's a very astute question, uh, ma'am. And he kind of like leans in, is kind of waiting Dr. for... Dr. Key. Doctor, uh, doctor? Well, ple it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. My, uh, might I ask what exactly is your speciality? Uh, anthropology. Anthropology. Well, how very, 
How very interesting. How very interesting. Well, I know that Douglas Henslow himself, Mr. Henslow, has a bit of a passing curiosity in the topic as well. How very curious. How very curious. Uh, is that the nature of your visit? Discuss uh, various anthropological finds and advancements in the field. Is that correct? Uh, if that's something he's open to discussing, I would love to speak about that, yes. Well, that's, that's very curious, very curious. Do you all mind? Just, I just don't want to have this conversation entirely out in front of everybody. I have a few rounds, Steve. If you all want to accompany me, we can talk a little bit further. If that's all right, would you all be all right with that? Uh, yes, I would be lovely. I would, I would love to come on rounds oh. with you, especially for someone who's going to be in charge. You must do the most amazing rounds. Well, aren't you just a ball of energy? It is a pleasure to have you here, and you are absolutely correct one day. That is the rumor. But Dr. Lawrence Teak is a wonderful what man. you heard, and he looks at Bree with a big smile. I can <laughs> only hope to live up to just half his standards. The man has been just absolutely an excellent purveyor, an excellent uh, 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 performer of mental health practitioner as you see now uh i forgot i am so sorry uh before i can take you around kind of show you a bit talk a little bit do a little two things at once that we like to talk about right i'm gonna have to need all you to sign a, a special waiver uh it's pretty standard boilerplate stuff there's some things you're gonna see some um uh, not all of our uh, of our our patients as you might expect are in a, uh, a particularly healthy state of mind and should any kind of ailments or injuries befall you, it basically says that you're not going to necessarily hold us liable for any kind of prosecution, that sort of thing. It's pretty standard boilerplate stuff. Just go ahead and sign right over there. Uh, I'll take okay. a closer look at it. Yeah. Instead of just signing away. Sure. Uh, sure. I immediately sure. signs without reading. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody have um, anybody have law? Da, da, da. I think I have a tiny, tiny... I'm I have 25 in law. Uh, you can roll law or you can roll just like uh, bureaucracy or you can roll um, like an intellect uh, test, but intellect I would want a hard success. Um, but uh, but otherwise you can roll the skills. Uh, where would... I, again, I could be just thinking of... Uh, we were just playing Delta Green last night, so I could be wrong yeah. about bureaucracy. Laws yeah. under language. Yeah, it, everything should be. Yeah. On the, I think on the sheet. Alphabetical. Oh, 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 is it? Okay. Dear goodness. So give me two. That is an 87 oh. over 25 for law. 61 for me, I failed. <laughs> okay. Uh, anybody else? No, how many signs in so <laughs> so, um, if we uh, took longer oh. to just read over it, uh, would that help, or if we just know? Uh, I mean, you could sit here and read it over, but you would basically be waiting here while the rest of them, uh, everybody else who signs, kind of okay. goes on it, that kind of thing. So you could, certainly could, like that. That's certainly fine. Uh, it would still require a role because you still have to sort of demonstrate knowledge of, of law or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, as far as you could tell. Uh, yeah, it just seems to... Can I have a copy of this form as well? Uh, I beg your pardon, ma'am. You want us to fill out a second <laughs> copy of this? I don't, 1937. Uh, you know, where they did oh, this, yeah, not yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't mean, like, photocopy. I meant, like, if they had blank forms, if I could take a blank form to have. Uh, well, ma'am, I suppose that is, that's a very... Uh, well, I beg your pardon. Doctor, I suppose that is... Uh, that's a very curious request, but it is one that I am more than happy to oblige. Uh, uh, Nurse Bethany, could you go ahead and provide Dr. Uh, Dr. Beverly Key here, I believe is what your name was. Uh, go ahead and provide her an extra copy of this. Perfect, fine, perfectly fine. I, again, as I say, it's all standard. Uh, just ensuring that you, uh, you are aware of the risks and the potential dangers oh, that might befall you as you pass through the holes, Joy, or not that. Any of those dangers will, of course, befall you. Uh, but just on the off chance that they do. Yes. Fan thank you, thank you. Fantastic. And so at this point, he kind of starts leading you oh. a l little bit further into, uh, like, past, like, what looks to be, like, a, a secured door orderlies and stuff on either side here or there uh, that kind of, like, watch as you pass by. Like, they all kind of exchange a sort of a friendly greeting uh, with, um, with Dr. Keaton. 
and he's just kind of like walking around, just telling, oh, yeah, duh. I'll tell you, Mr. Henslow is a very curious case indeed. Very curious case. He came to us many years ago. He's, uh, well, he's been a very difficult man. He's been subject to a uh, well, significant amount of flights of fancy, as you might say. He's been, you know, he's been a man who has, um, well, he's suffered something uh, in his past, and he has had a great deal of difficulty trying to process the the grief, the, uh, the emotions, the, well, the violent, the violent event that he occurred uh, back when, oh, what year was that, 1924 or so, I would imagine. And uh, what we're trying to do here is trying to get him to cease uh, externalizing it and start processing it properly. However, we've had, uh, for many years, we did actually have a bit of success with him to the point we even set him free uh, where he was able to go home with his mother. And unfortunately, while he was out, he suffered a bit of a relapse and well, now he's here on court order. He's here no longer under his own volition, uh, but it is now a, uh, well, a ward of state, so to speak. Uh, so he's in very careful care. Now, I, I'll be perfectly perfectly honest to you. Some of the stories, some of the information, some of the, the details of the our sessions over the years, well, they have posed a, a very keen professional curiosity on my end, and I, I am not ashamed to say so. So when I hear that there are not one, not two, but five individuals coming to visit a man who hasn't had a visitor, well, almost the entire time that I have been running or I have been in charge of his care, well, that is quite curious indeed. I uh, I must say that I am a touch interested in what he might say to you. And uh, How long has that been? Well, well, let me see here. He kind of thinks a bit. And uh, he starts thinking, like, well, Mr. Let's see, Mr. Henslow came into our, uh, oh, he's been here for, I would say, better part, eight years or so. No, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. He was here for about eight years, back around 32, 33, let him out. Things were doing just fine on his own. And then, well, then he had his encounter with Mr. Job. Are you all here to see Mr. Job as well? Yes. Bree will just nod and not verbalize anything. I'll be honest with you. I consider myself an astute judgment of character, and I can tell that none of you know who Mr. Mr. Job is, do you now? Now, there's no shame in that. There's no shame, no shame. I'm just very curious indeed. Because the two of them have such a shared history, shared psychosis. The very uh, the very descriptions and details of what went down back in, um, oh, what do they say, Los Angeles back in 1924 are so distinct. So vibrant with their descriptions, and they uh, they just seem to be inherently connected. I thought I just assumed that if you all come to see one, you must be coming to see the other as well. Actually, we've never heard of him. Yeah, mm. oh, we are only friends with someone who's friends with Mr. Henslow. Yeah, you keep saying that again. I'm just curious, who is this uh, mystery friend that is that you are here on behalf of? Uh, we are here on behalf of the estate of Mr. Winston. You see him suddenly perk up as he was like kind of walking around, kind of half a... I'm sorry. Are you saying you are here on behalf of Mr. Walter Winston, pharmaceutical uh, manufacturing search? Uh, yes, the sir. The late Walter Winston, I should say. Well, isn't that fascinating? Isn't that fascinating indeed? Well, I read that uh, he passed away earlier this year and all his... Uh, all his funds and findings, his, all his various businesses and such went on, um, passed on down to Miss Janet Winston Rogers. You know, a few times, the Walter Winston name has come up. Pharmaceutical industry, medical, uh, mental health industry. There, there is a number of uh, medications we do that do come out of some of his production. So it's very interesting, very interesting. Now, what, um, what interest is it of, uh, of, the, of the Winston family, might I ask? Uh, Shama actually interrupts at, at this point, um, and uh, be, before that question can be asked, which is all such a bias, I was like, <laughs> I'll say, um, wait, you said he didn't have any visitors? He was here for eight you. years, and he That's didn't correct. have any visitors? Oh, that is that Yes, is so indeed. Sad. It is. Uh, I'll tell you, he has always been a bit desperate to talk to. If I can be so bold, 
And I do believe that him having such conversations could be a benefit to him, which is, well, to be frank, the only reason I let all you all on back here to talk to you, because I just, like I said, I just care about the, I care about my patients well, just so the, very much. Certainly, if, if you're going to be the head of medicine here, this will be. Oh, oh you stop it now, young lady. You, mean, oh, you very are what they wise. call. Uh, Putting the cart before the horse, I believe. <laughs> yes, indeed. It's at this point you guys hear a voice uh, coming from as you're kind of you're wandering around. You're passing by these like tiny private rooms here and there. Like some of the doors are open. There's like and they're empty. Others there's people inside kind of looking at you. And you hear a voice as you start moving past more of a joint or a kind of collective area. There's a couple of people playing cards and books. And you hear like. Darling, please. Oh, my God, darling. This place is absolutely dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. So little color. And you see, wandering towards you all is a, a fairly obese woman. Um, you would probably peg her in her 40s or so. Uh, and uh, she's just sort of sauntering up in this 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 white coat that seems to be the common uh, uniform for various patients. You've seen several others as you pass by. <laughs> Darling, and she, she's just like walking right up to Dr. Keaton. Darling, might I use the phone in your office to contact my manager? I really should not be here. And then she kind of turns to you. Oh, I am so terribly sorry to meet up. Where am I? Where are my manners? Olivia Clarendon. Pleasure, pleasure. Olivia Clarendon. Perhaps you've seen my films? And she just kind of looks out at you. Yes. And she sees like these blank looks. I like, haven't seen any of her films. Uh, roll a luck test. I would like to roll a luck test too. Sure. Um, I would also even take if you have like an arts type of, te- uh, if you have any kind of anything in the arts, like for film or anything like that, you could take that. Um, also just, <laughs> uh, says, you know what? Take it. Sure. Good musical. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Apparently, Dr. Beverly Key does not partake in the arts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, what about you, Marie? How did you do? It looks like we got a success from Shima. Uh, yeah, so I, I rolled a, a 26, um, which would be okay. under 51 for luck or under 80 for singing. Both of you absolutely recognize the name. She is a, uh, a, a, a relatively famous uh, movie star uh, and is very much not this woman. Uh, looks absolutely nothing like this woman. Uh, I would say maybe you recognize a film like uh, the 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 pace that kills or um, or Arizona Badman stuff like like a western type of thing it is absolutely not this woman. She's probably maybe fifteen years uh, uh, too old, and she definitely like like the woman you're thinking of, uh, Olivia Clarendon. She is you know the the sort of textbook movie star of the era, like, like pre golden age of heart uh, of Hollywood type. And it, and it, it is absolutely not her. Uh, and then, now, now, Nancy, now, now, calm down there, sweetheart. Uh, I'm so very sorry about this. I'm so very sorry. Uh, some, please do not overwhelm these kind visitors if you don't mind. And you see just kind of motions over one of the orderlies starts coming up, uh, and kind of very gently and respectfully kind of grabs her by the arm. And she's just like, kind of, well, I never uh, very like in this sort of this, this sort of this reaction as if she's like shocked uh, about what's happening. And as uh, as they're kind of pulling her away, they were at least pulling away. He just turns to you. I was like, dear girl, I'll tell you, we saw the red rope just the other day uh, down in the entertainment room. And she now she thinks she's Olivia Clarendon. Uh, anyhow, yeah, a couple weeks ago, she thought she was. Oh, uh, well, what was her name? I, mm, uh, jazz singer uh oh my goodness she's he's like blanking he's trying so hard to remember the name of this like the like really popular jazz singer and she, I, i'm so i'm so i'm not much one for music anyhow where were we now is he starts to is try that to turn what you happens back. when people don't have friends to visit them <laughs> oh no 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 i <laughs> i'm sorry miss i'm sorry uh do you, are you also doctor doctor oberon is that is, is, is that correct or? no no but i <laughs> <laughs> not a dog. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a very astute question, nonetheless. And you no, know, I can tell you with great certainty that everyone's psychosis here is, well, it's different, with the exception of Douglas Henslow and Egg Joe, which, as I said, have a very peculiar shared link 
in terms of some of the, the imagery that they have concocted over the course of their li- their lives. Uh, but no, Nancy, Nancy's one where she just gets these flights of fancy and she has trouble identifying who she is. Not a, well, Mr. Henslow, he knows exactly who he is. That's that's not the source of his problem, you see, is, is yeah, well, m- other things. Um, Egg Job as well. Uh, they know who they are, I must say. They are just Does instead struggling Job with the trauma. Does at least have friends who visit him? Oh, no, I'm afraid not. Now, Egg Job, he's, uh, well, he's an interesting character as well. Uh, he, hasn't, uh, he hasn't been here quite as long as uh, Mr. Henslow. Uh, but Mr. Job has been with us, well, since they had that violent, violent encounter. It was, was that 32, 33? I'd have to check my files in my office to be sure. But I believe it was somewhere around then, 32, 33. It was when Mr. Henslow was out uh, staying with his family after he had eight good years of solid progress. And he was starting to see the world in a sort of a positive and optimistic way. And didn't have that sort of reservoir of bitterness that is kind of, well, you'll see when you speak with him. My hope is maybe some of that bitterness will go away when we have some folk to talk to. Um, but you see, the two of them, they have this, um, they have this fiction in their head. They, whether or not any of this is true, it's hard to really say, but both of them have this, this shared story and they kind of bounce off one another. Something happened. Los Angeles, 1924, something about fire, gunfire, this, that, and the other. It's, uh, it's quite alarming, I must say. Uh, absolutely alarming. Whatever it is, these two have, uh, whatever that exactly happened back there, I don't, I don't exactly know um, what occurred to them. Whether or not any of it's even true at all. But whatever it was, I can tell you involved gunplay. That has come up. I can tell you that involved apparently murder, fire, and... Uh, well, it was just far too much for them to internalize. Now, they are not doing as Nancy has done in projecting herself into another person. So there is that at least. Now, but Nancy's harmless. Don't worry about Nancy at all. She just, I think she's just just a little bit bored with her life is all. Anyhow, and he kind of turns and he tries to continue. To, and, and in the middle of all of this, he's not just like talking about his patients, but he's like pointing out like this nice little portico. He's kind of giving you this like little history of this, this history of that, uh, that sort of thing. You guys can tell as you're traveling around that um, I think all of you are kind of astute enough to know that the place is not in the best of condition. Um, you're certainly seeing places where there's like water stains here and there, where wallpaper is kind of peeling, all that sort of thing. Um, and you definitely get the sense that uh, there's a... You're you're starting to see between what you're observing and how he's talking, and then how how very interested he got the sudden mention of like the Walter Winston estate. That there's a definitely a bit of a salesmanship kind of vibe going on here, uh, as he's trying to kind of impress you all. Uh, maybe he's gotten the wrong impression about uh, about like your the nature of why you're here, but uh, you can see as he's sort of pointing this out, it kind of points to this beautiful portrait of like Dr. Teak and stuff and kind of gives you this little bit of a history lesson, that sort of thing. Um, are any of you asking questions or are you, are you looking for anything, observing anything? Uh, so Marie would be wanting to um, just sort of, because we, we sort of had the, the one um, Nancy that, that we kind of ran into, but just sort of the, the general sense of um, what the residents here are up to. Do they seem to have kind of free movement around or do there seem to be sort of like locked hallways or, you know, kind of sure. those types of things? Okay. Uh, you can go ahead and um, we can just kind of roll a spot hidden to sort of just ba- basically get a, get a, uh, sort of lay of the land here, that kind of thing, uh, as he's giving you this tour. Um, Beverly would be, because he mentioned his own interest in anthropology, um, especially in regards to Mr. Henslow. Douglas's. Yeah, Douglas's interest. He says Douglas had, uh, Henslow had an interest in it, not him himself. He's a, he's got a it. Okay. Got it. Got it. So this whole time he's basically just sort of you you really get the sense like he's going like he's got like a car salesman vibe in a way as he's like show he's trying to like chest out a little bit puff puff his chest out a little bit trying to get like um like just just sort of 
boast a little bit about what they're doing here. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can definitely tell that there is this, this, this kind of rundown nature. It doesn't look as clean quite as much. I think uh, maybe Beverly would hit on that and, and she'll look to Patrick and, you know, I'm sure Janet would love to hear about the wonderful work that is going on around here after our visit. We'll have to, when we return, we'll have to let her know. Oh, of course. We'll play him a okay. bit. Like we're, I think he's gotten the intention that we're trying to like, I think about and investing. Like, yeah. yeah. So we'll play on the, yeah, he de Yeah, you can de He his he's had a very friendly demeanor uh, from the very beginning, um, and he does seem to just he was he was definitely curious about you all. Uh, but at the mention of the Walter Winston estate, like you can definitely tell that he is now being just a bit more. Uh, he's kind of gloating and kind of pointing this, boasting about this, boasting about that, like looking mm -hmm. at sort of this new dispensary, that new, that kind of thing. Uh, Marie, how did you do? Uh, so I spent luck so that I would succeed because I rolled a 68 over 60 and spent the eight. So I would say that as you're wandering about, and he's really only been showing you like the first floor, the second floor, you can tell there's probably uh, another floor or two and there might even be a basement, something like that. He even refers maybe to the basement. People take their meals, that sort of thing. Um, and he references like an entertainment room or that kind of thing. Um, but you can tell that there are, some patients are yelling and kind of hitting themselves or like kind of waggling fingers at each other. And some of them are just kind of leering or staring a little bit too long at you all, but none of them, they all have this general sense of um, lethargy to them. They feel very um, subdued in some way, sedated as you're kind of wandering past. Medicated. Um, I'll say that Beverly and Patrick, the two of you are, are kind of, trying to talk a bit to Dr. Keaton, kind of play into those ideas, maybe dropping Walter Winston or Janet Wilson or like looking into more investment opportunities or like, you know, pharmaceutical goodness is really an opportunity for growth, you know, these types of things. And that's kind of happening. Yeah. Are there certain, you know, uh, things that you have found has been more effective than others? We would love to hear about that, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And as he's just, he kind of turns around and he starts out, well, yeah. Uh, and he starts kind of going over all of the various like medications that uh, that they use and how he knows that, uh, well, Walter Winston Industries, I'm sure they could go ahead and they can produce those sorts of things. And he kind of just starts leading you down a hallway. Um, OK, that's when um, as you start, as he sort of pushes this door open and starts moving down the hall, the swing door closes. Marie, you're kind of lingering behind. Beverly, you're following on his heels. Shami, you're right next to him. That's when Marie, you notice uh, that there is this, you can see this is one man that stood out to you off to the side that was kind of unlike the others was really, uh, showing a bit of, uh, resistance and he's sort of like pushing and shoving. You see there's a couple orderlies that are trying to kind of escort him and shove him into one of these, uh, these, these small rooms, the rooms that you've passed thus far. Uh, they're definitely small, private, probably single person, uh, white. They can see they're padded and such here and there. But it's at that point, Marie, when this man breaks free, he just sort of throws like one, uh, one of these, uh, orderlies off, shuts the door, turns and just starts running in your direction. You can see he's like, he's fairly hefty, like big guy, probably outweighs you by a good 200 pounds. He's balding. He's got these huge, these big, you know, big ham hocks, ham fisted, wild, wild eyes are just kind of darting crazy around here and there, but they just, they stare and they lock in on you. Like it's just, it's just, there's all these other things, but for some reason, uh, his mouth kind of opens up and you can see these yellow crooked teeth that are sort of going this way and that, and he comes charging in your direction. The, one of the other orderlies reaches up and tries to grab him by the leg, uh, but doesn't quite get there. Uh, I would like to know uh, if you all could help me out here. What is everyone's dex scores? Uh, so Marie, let's start with you. What's your dex score? 70. Okay. Uh, Shima, what is your dex score? 60. Okay. Uh, what is yours, Beverly? 50. Okay. What about you, Patrick? 60. 60. Okay. So 
this guy comes charging at you, Marie. Um, you, let me check his stats really fast to see if he goes before or after you. Uh, you said you're 70. Okay. Marie, yeah, 70. you have, you have one quick moment to do something. What do you do as he comes charging at you? Um, it's stepping out of the way. Like I do not want to be bull rushed by this individual. So, um, she's just going to kind of get herself aside and see if she can clear anyone else in the party. What do you mean clear anyone else? What does that mean? So like if someone's behind me and I think if I step out of the way, then he's going to like run into <laughs> like, you know, someone behind me, I want to try to like, you know, kind of put an arm out and step aside and see if I can move them with me. Okay. Uh, Okay, so you're trying to essentially just drag somebody else out of the way? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll say that's going to be, it'll be Beverly. All right, so uh, as the, as like everyone's kind of like half through and half on one side of this swinging door that uh, Dr. Keaton has already passed through, this happens, this guy comes charging in. Marie, you put a hand out and you you and, and Beverly, you kind of maybe grab her as she's about to go through the door and you just sort of like shove her through a little bit faster and the door swings shut. Uh, leaving you and Shima and Patrick, uh, and we'll say pastors through the door as well, uh, behind, which means that as you dodge out of the way, um, I mean, the two of you just go barreling through the door and that leaves Shima and Patrick behind. This guy has 65. So he'll oh, go gosh. next. It'll be 50, 50 then for Shima or Patrick as he's going to turn his attention to Patrick and he's going to leap towards Patrick now. Uh, so, oh, boy. uh, have I'm not sure if you guys have done combat. We're technically in combat, just so you know. So basically, you can. He's about to perform an attack on you, Patrick. Uh, you can. You have a choice when you're attacked. You can either dodge or you can fight back. If you choose to dodge, you roll dodge skill versus the attacker's fighting skill. Uh, if you choose to fight back, uh, you roll fighting against the the attacker's fighting skill. Once rolled, the side with the better level of success basically avoid, avoids being harm and inflicts their damage on their opponent in the case of fighting back. Uh, if the attacker wins, damage is dealt. If the defender wins, they successfully avoid the attack and also do damage if they chose to fight back. Uh, basically, that's how it goes. So, Patrick, uh, what are you going to do as this guy has now turned his attention to you instead? Running back on patience feels awful, but I'm going to do it. Okay. You're going to fight back. Okay. Go ahead. Give us a roll. Are you able to like try and detain them in the sense of fighting back or? Uh, I would say. Oh, like let's... grapple yeah. versus like <laughs> punch. Because I, I, <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. I just rolled really well. So let's just see what that happens. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, okay. It might be a moot point. <laughs> 66. Is that crit fails? Oh. Uh, uh, that's, no, no. Okay. I mean, there's Delta a crit fail, but it's it's like it's in the upper nineties or hundred, depending on your your yeah. skill level. Uh, but doubles just okay. Okay, so you try like as you see him coming, maybe you just like instinctively try to throw a cross, but he just pushes right through it, and your hand just kind of bounces off this thick, heavy shoulder. Like he and he just slams in you you into the wall. You just feel the breath, just and you feel him, and you just feel suddenly. He starts biting you. He's like, ah, 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 and he's just getting on your face. He's getting on your hands. Uh, and uh, I rolled a six. Uh, that's why I was so very excited. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> six uh, is better than 66. Okay. Ah, he's off, going man. to do, as he has now pinned you against the wall and he's biting, you're going to take five points of damage uh, as you're basically getting like these, oh, you just feel him essentially bite you right in your neck, almost like he's, almost like, you know, it's an intimate moment. Uh, and then as you push him off, he kind of stumbles a bit and he grabs your hand. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, I will turn then after that to uh, Patrick, you've used your turn to try to uh, basically fight back. So you've used your action to do that. Um, how about Shima? Shima, what do you want to do? Uh, it, it's been a minute since I've done combat in this system. Um, mm -hmm. Is an action like, can I say something and then based on his response to an action or is that 
No, or do so I do basically that? an action is like you can you you can attack that's obviously an action like and usually using a fighting skill or a firearm skill is, is the most common thing you can perform a fighting maneuver which is what like grappling would be um you could try to just flee combat run away if any of you had spells which one of you do uh you could be able to cast a spell possibly um or just something else that you think might require a dice roll that's basically what the action is is like as a dice roll requirement so the example is like picking a lock or something like that right um, uh in, so. in that case then seeing the damage that I, I i am the intention is to try and rest onto the floor and i'm gonna give you a brawl roll uh she kind of looks on just like ah Oh, and she take, takes off her glasses and <laughs> puts it in <laughs> her pocket. And anyone that can see her face can see that she's pretty conflicted about what she feels like she has to do. Okay. Um, so you want, but you that want to try is to tackle him? a success. Okay. So with before an, we get... Oh, sorry. Bef- with so a let's, let's, let's talk about a fu- Let's talk about a fighting maneuver first. So a fighting maneuver, yeah. you you basically, there's we have to compare builds. So there's your build on your character okay. sheet. If the character performing the maneuver has a smaller build than the opponent, uh, then the character, you would take a penalty die for each point of difference. If an opponent exceeds the attacker's build by three or more, any fighting maneuvers are accepted. That's not going to be an issue. Uh, so he has a build of one. What is your build? Uh, my build is also one. Okay, so yeah, so no no penalty dies. So the, the die just goes through normally. Uh, and since he is so busy attacking Patrick, uh, I'm going to say he's not he, he's not going to like give up his next action or anything like that. You just tackle him to the ground, and that's exactly what happens. So you rush over. So describe what it looks like as Shima runs over and tackles him down. Um, I, I think she... Um, it, this is not something that's, that's unfamiliar to her, this tactic. So she... Um, she she takes him down from the knee and then just kind of kneels on his back and like presses down as hard as she can to push him into the floor with her Absolutely. knee. Absolutely. And that's exactly and what happens. tries to you know, hold pinned. his hands. <laughs> you're, you're, you're doing the, almost like the very thing like an orderly might do in a situation like this is just try to keep him down. Uh, Patrick, what would you like to do? Uh, Shima has tackled him to the ground and is trying to keep him pinned uh, you are, I would say you feel he broke skin on your hand, at least, or on your wrist, we'll say, uh, on your neck. You don't, you don't think he broke skin, but you can feel like a bruise or something might form. Uh, but otherwise I think you're, you think you're probably okay. What would you want to do, Patrick? Look for nearby sedatives, maybe inject them. Okay, uh, you do see there is a orderly that is getting up that tried to grab him before he got away, and he like they're in the process of trying to catch up to where Shima is. Uh, in terms of, in terms of sedatives, yeah, there's none that are like out in the open. Uh, like there is sort of a nurse's sort of station where it looks like they dispense and people line up and they get stuff into a cup, but it's all locked behind that particular. Um, that particular counter. So there's nothing really immediately available. Then I'll just pile on this guy, keep him down. Okay. Um, I would say that I would say probably no rule necessary. We'll just say because Shima has already successfully tackled him again, you hop down on top of him and the two of you are kind of pinning him. Uh, Bev, uh, you just got pushed from behind by Marie. Do you turn around and stab her in the face or is there something else that you would like to do? Uh, In the (laughs) ear. In the ear. Ear is always the preferred target. Um, I think Bev would just kind of be a little bit caught off guard because she was so focused on talking to Dr. Keaton that Mm -hmm. she'll turn around to see, like, what's happening and what's going on. Um, Mm -hmm. And you hear the sounds of scuffling. Maybe you see through one of the windows, like, the orderly is trying to now get up and and sort of uh, run in that direction. Dr. Keaton, do you have... Any sedatives on hand to well, assist? Oh, oh my goodness, I am so very sorry. And he, he's now that he's alerted to it, he like kind of turns around at this point, and kind of uh, gently pushes past. He puts a very gentle hand, puts a very gentle hand on your shoulder, just kind of sets you off slightly to the side, pushes her up. Mr. Culver, please help. Ma'am, can you please? And he kind of like starts directing the orderlies down. They say, oh, I, was, I was so, was, I was so very sorry. As they're, they're getting up and kind of coming over and they're taking 
from Shima and Patrick, who have essentially both gotten one of this guy's big old arms and pinned it to the ground the whole time, like a rabid dog or animal. He's just, been, arr, arr, just trying to bite you, Shima, trying to bite you, Patrick, just going to down. But the, since the two of you are on top, you're able to keep your distance. And it's at that point um, that you're able to kind of wait around. I need Patrick. Uh, and I'll say, uh, yeah, I'll say Shima and Patrick. Go ahead and just roll sand tests. Because I think you two saw like this burst of violence as this guy just lost his mind and just started attacking Patrick. Um, Marie, Beverly, you're okay. Because you guys actually went through the door. So I'll say sand tests for Shima and Patrick. All right. Can you roll good. psychology on this guy? He is psychotic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just, I meant more so 50. in the sense of like. 2,550? Okay. Very Both dark. of you are Sorry, okay. Ashley. It was a very kind of violent and intense moment. And you're kind of bleeding at this point, And like a man just was just rapidly like kind of tearing through you. Uh, but as, as everyone gets up. Dr. Keaton kind of comes over to you, Patrick. I, I'm so very sorry, Mr. Prime. I'm so very, very sorry. Oh, my goodness. Did he, did he, oh, oh he got you right there. I'm so, <laughs> Mr. Culver, he has a very interesting, <laughs> he is a man who is normally capable of withholding some of his more aggressive tendencies. We'll get him. I am so very sorry, and I'm very glad that you signed that waiver. At this point, Marie, the only person in this hallway Everybody else has, uh, has kind of come back through the door. The door swinging. Maybe Beverly's there as well. Marie, you're looking around. And you've been peeking at the different rooms of people and such. You look up and you look down the hall, like straight ahead, like right where like this T section hits, there is a, a patient door. And you can see like there's a, a square window. You can see there's the head of a man. And that's right there in that window in, in the room itself. He's got this sort of stringy hair, black hair, a little bit unshaved, uh, kind of stubble on his chin. Got these sunken dark eyes. And you see he just brings a finger up to his throat and with an incredibly impassive face, drags it across his throat. And when he gets to this other side, there's this little grin happens as his head tilts down in your direction. And that's where we're going to go ahead and stop for today. Oh, my word. <laughs> no, All right. Like 10 more minutes. Like 10 more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that like right? your brick like stare? Like <laughs> you guys need to go to bed. Okay. No. No more 10 more minutes. Go in the bed. Jeffrey, I don't have a bad time. <laughs> do it now. All right. All right. Uh, we'll call it there. And then we'll pick up next week with uh steven back so we can finish up uh i didn't want to get too far there's a couple scenes yeah. coming up that i didn't want to do without him because they're pretty fun and interesting and there's this chock full of info uh as you might imagine you're going to go interview douglas henslow and i kind of wanted him there for that yeah, uh, yeah okay sure, sure, sure. okay uh so there we're at uh are we doing okay? Everyone fun? Sorry about that. I'm man. so Just, hyped. That was great. <laughs> that was great. I, my learning I is that Ben up. has a very bitey town. <laughs> very bitey. Right? Very, bitey. Two, very Two bites of very, very bitey. Very well known. Very well known. <laughs> very well known for that. Um, Savannah yeah. for the biter. <laughs> how quickly? <laughs> how quickly and without provocation you all immediately turn towards like uh, kind of bullying an old man and then breaking onto the ground on private property. I just I was like, quickly, no. and utterly unprovoked. Amazing, <laughs> amazing, fantastic. I love it. Like, but, uh. but, 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 but we want to get over there. And you said no. That's 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 that's, that's unfortunate. That that is. Yeah, it says no, and we're pissed about it. <laughs> oh God. Compared I, to our Delta Green Gabe, what do you guys are like? No, I don't. I we don't want to upset anybody. <laughs> let's not do this. It's not you know intimidating. Like that's literally you can't. Ah. Know, so funny. Like no, you should be pistol whipping that guy, and then you go and you burn the house down. And that's what you do. That's it. Like, here, like oh. good stuff. All right. Uh, why don't we go ahead and do a couple of plugs so we get on out of here? So, uh, my should I start with you? Where can we find you on the internet? I saw you made a video about what? pissing me off. <laughs> I, you know what? I think I might take that down, actually. 
Uh, it's, uh, it's, I don't know, it, it ended up being a little more negative than I'm really comfortable with because generally I like to be more constructive on my Two Plays games on YouTube uh, if you want to check that out. Um, yeah, especially if you want to watch my most recent video that I'm going to take down probably tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> take it down nothing like poking fun goes through how to piss off your gm how to uh, piss off your gm <laughs> it's, it's it's more than just that though it's like it's yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good video, good video. Oh, so that's all the videos are uh okay uh steven would normally be here to assist in this but since he's not off to do it all by myself our next game it's gonna be monday we're gonna be playing some what the hell are we playing monster of the week uh so come back starting up a new mystery uh, having a lot of fun with that PTA game. Uh, Tuesday, we're going to be doing some Marvel Multiverse RPG. Uh, and we're also uh, going to be doing some giveaways as Marvel is so very kind. Uh, the folks at the uh, who actually made the game are so very kind to give us a couple of Demiplane uh, codes to give out. Uh, so if you're interested in kind of getting access to uh, to Marvel Multiverse upon Demiplane, come hang out. You're going to get a chance to do it. Thursday, uh, we're going back to a cult question mark up on a mountain with very, very polite people as we play a more werewolf the apocalypse. Uh, and next Friday, no Warhammer, uh, as our, our, our Friday schedule is going to be a little bit weird for the next couple of weeks as, as holidays are going to interfere, but we are probably going to do a one shot, uh, um, Mary Oddmas game. We're going to do Into the Odd, Electric Bastion Land, but we're going to use like their uh mcdowell's like a uh, christmas sort of setting we played it once last year we did it again so that's probably it's the plan so next fun Friday. and then hopefully next saturday more of this all right okay uh so we're gonna go ahead and raid some folks uh what do we want to do what do we want to do let's do hmm <laughs> i probably should have. high shelf collective nope nope they're, they're just nope doesn't look like they're up and ready to go yet uh let's... lost tribes is up lost tribes sounds good that's what we're gonna raid follow the raid have a great night. We'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. I'll be seeing you. Bye. Bye.